Welcome to Rocket League, a thrilling and technically demanding game that's played competitively around the world. To put it simply, Rocket League is essentially soccer with cars. No, not like that. More like... Yeah, that's more like it. Competitive Rocket League can be played a few different ways, but the most common format is 3v3. Two teams, six athletes, one pitch. Each match is five minutes long, and the goal is to score the most goals. At the end of the five minutes, if both teams are tied, it will be an overtime. The first team to score wins, and the clock has no limit. To help players travel around the map, there are two types of boost pads littered around the map. Driving over these will fill your boost meter, which in turn allows you to, you guessed it, boost your speed. When a player is going supersonic, a little trail will appear behind their back wheels. Then, they have the ability to demolish another player's car. Some teams will use demos as a strategy tool to open up the opposing team's net. And, well, that's pretty much it. Simple, right? This is one of Rocket League's greatest strengths. Literally anyone can tune into a match or pick it up to play themselves, and they'll get the gist immediately. But what really makes this an exciting esport for both fans and players is the skill difference between casual and competitive players. Rocket League is an incredibly technical game that, while easy to pick up, takes dedication and discipline to master. At a macro level, teams have to be in constant communication and have nearly perfect map awareness. And at a micro level, because Rocket League is a physics-based game where individual skill takes over, mastering the control over your vehicle is a fun and rewarding experience. And seeing what the pros are capable of makes watching Rocket League exciting in its own right. Good evening, Griffins. My name is Scorch Darren, also known as Darren Brinks, and right next to me... And my name is Cody Doc McLaughlin. Cody, how you doing? Pretty good, pretty That's good. pretty good. We are almost about to go ahead and get in our game here. We're going to get in this pretty fast. But tonight, we do have two games for you, League of Legends and Rocket League. First, we have Rocket League. Rocket League, it will be MWSU's very own Griffin Esports versus NSU, which is Northeastern State. This is the Midwest Collegiate League, and this is a preseason game. So pretty much this is... Pretty much practice is the best way I'm going to go ahead and put it there. But it's still a game. So, Cody, how you feeling? How you feeling? What do you uh, want to see? Pretty good. Really, I want to see, I mean, the usual. You see all those, uh, the teamwork they do, how they right. set it up for each other, and just how they always back up each other. Sure, right. I mean, usually when it comes to MWSU, of course, we do have the usual Chura, Heiss. Uh, that's not, no, Heiss is a spec there. We have Chura. Mac, I believe, correct? I believe so. Chura, Mac, and Ox. And then uh, on the other side, of course, we do not have them loaded in yet. But when it comes to MWSU, they've been practicing. They have a lot of synergy uh, that works very well together. As we saw from uh, the last match, which I believe was the ECAC, if I am correct. I believe they're playing in two different leagues, uh, of course. Uh, what they did there is that uh, when it came to MWSU, they managed to go ahead and find all these like openings in their uh, in like the um, enemy's defense, of course. And then what they did there is they managed to go ahead and slip the ball in several different times. So and broke over some axles, we are gonna go you know, stuff like that. Yeah, and the check engine lights coming on and all that. It, fun exactly, stuff, so. you know, the walls disappearing, including everything else inside the car. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Area right. Fifty One. There we go. It seems that like we do have our other teams loading in here, and we should be good to go quite soon. Hoping everyone goes into their designated spots. All righty. Here we go. This countdown is going to go ahead and start off here, and we are going to go ahead and see kickoff. Here we go. Already loaded in here. It seems that we are going to go ahead and see. I believe we are stuck on the point of what seems to be a uh, heist here. So here we go. It seems that uh, they're going to go ahead. Uh, the ball's still stuck at a standstill in the middle here. It's a little hard with this camera. <laughs> but, of course... <laughs> 
He is going for that he, ball. <laughs> it seems that um, we are on uh, POV camp of high. So here we go. It seems that what's going to happen here is that we're going to go ahead and see a little bit of defense in here coming in from Missouri Western. Missouri Western going to go ahead and uh, make sure that ball gets knocked back over to the side of NSU. Here we go. Back over to this heist. Heist going to go ahead and knock it off. Ooh. Ooh, but it seems that there is somebody there. I believe his name is Jim the something, uh, or Jay Matthew uh, would be the term here. MWSU almost going to go ahead and get it knocked in by Chura. Here we go, though. It seems that we do see a uh, player on the side of Missouri Western. Going to go ahead and, and be uh, on defense here. I don't Ball's know what that was. The they just here. hit each other. Ooh, right going to go ahead and knock it off on the nose of the car there. Here we go. Can they go ahead and make it over? No. Unfortunately, not able to make contact with the ball. Here we go. A little bit uh, hard to see here. Seems that Trey's going to go ahead and try and line it up there, but there is no follow-up there. Here we go. We're going to go see bounce off there. Coming in from Missouri Ooh, West. Here we save go. Trey's going to play Chura. a little bit of goal. He's going to go ahead and knock it off of uh, – Trey's going to go ahead and knock it off himself, and Trey's going to go ahead and follow up with himself here. But Trey's going to get taken out by a boosting uh, – I can't really pronounce that name. We're going to call it Years. I believe it could be pronounced years or Y I R U Z. That's a very interesting name, and I don't know how to spell it. So yours. I'm gonna risk yours. 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 Sure, we'll go ahead and uh, I guess so. Already, yours gonna go ahead and take out Ox. Here we go. It's gonna get lined up there, but unfortunately, it's gonna get knocked away by M or by NSU. Here we go. Is it gonna go ahead and go in? Shot by Churin? No, it's not. Here we go. Let's see, if we're gonna have Heist gonna go ahead and line it up there, but nope, not gonna quite make it in. Nobody's gonna be able to follow up with it. But it seems that Churin's gonna go ahead and shoot again, as we did see. But it seems that Galdian's gonna go ahead and um, gonna go ahead and save it there. Here we go. Heist gonna go ahead and bounce himself off there. Can he go ahead and get the reset? Ooh. No, he's not. But almost gonna go ahead and get a shot on the goal. Here we go. What seems to be, it seems that NWSU, NSU is definitely going to go ahead and uh, get it on over to the uh, side of MWSU. But MWSU is immediately going to go ahead and knock it over. Here comes that follow-up. But it does not seem that uh, MWSU is going to make quite good contact with the ball there. So it's going to be able to go ahead and uh, going to be able to keep uh, kept on the side of NSU. But here we go. Ball almost going to go ahead and go in, but it's going to go ahead and bounce off that crossbar there. Hit so. back from the heist, knock it back over. Uh, here's another thing. We're going to try to get it set up, but it looks like like the other team, our teammates are okay, over on the other side. Right they were there. coming for it. High school trying to set up and Ox with oh, almost no. a hit in, but stopped by Jay Matthew. But here comes Heist again, knocking it towards the goal. Almost there, hits the corners of it. And there's Ox with a score follow up from that knock away from the goal. That was actually a pretty good follow up right there. Yeah, almost, uh, uh, almost uh, there. But as I said, you know, finding that little bit of an opening in that defense there, as you saw, one of the players on the side of NSU uh, actually jumped there. And I, I couldn't quite make it. Uh, or couldn't quite make connection with the ball to go ahead and save it there. So one shot or one point already going to go to the side of MWSU. So there we go. It seems that the uh, seems that what we're going to go ahead and see here off that kickoff there. It seems that MWSU is going to go ahead and win that. But how, or however, Ox going to be able to go ahead and make contact with the ball in mid air. Going to go ahead and stop Galdian from trying to make any uh, progress over towards getting to their. Uh, Getting to their, uh, what was the word? I forgot the word. Here we go. Ooh, amazing shots coming in from MWSU. Ooh. Good teamwork. Not quite going to make it into the goal, though, but uh, good uh, good effort there. So here we go. MWSU uh, with Cher, though. Cher is going to go ahead and make contact with the ball. It's going to go ahead and bounce off the right wall there. Is it going to go ahead and bounce in? No, it seems that NSU is going to go ahead and bounce it away. Here we go. So it seems that uh, Galdian's going to go ahead and take the boost away from Heist, but Ox going to go ahead and try and get it in on his own. Here we go. Heist going to go ahead and try and kick it in. Does not quite make it. Saved by Jay Matthews. Oh, a little, little bit of uh, car wrestling there. <laughs> I'm surprised nobody uh, got demoed, of course, but here we go. Heist going to go ahead and line himself up here. Can he go ahead and save the goal? He does, and it's going to go ahead and get knocked away by Chura. Chura with a good uh, passive play, though, to go ahead and get, it, uh, get that... Um, Get that stress off of Heist there. It seems that we're going to have Char going to go ahead and get, uh, demo yours. Here we go. Ooh, almost. Is it going to go in? Ox going to go ahead and with a save. Go ahead and save it there, helping Heist out a bit here. Here we go. Ball is going to make progression down towards the field on the side of NSU. Unfortunately, Heist going to go ahead and miss that ball there. Ox going to go ahead and uh, reposition it back up there. It seems the ball is just getting reset there. It's at a standstill just a little bit uh, in the corner of NSU's side. Here we go. Here comes the reposition coming in from Heist. Waiting to see if NSU is going to make progression towards the ball down over to the side of MWSU. does not seem so. Here we go. Can Heist go ahead and get it in? He's going to go ahead and stall NSU from trying to make any 
uh, type of play going back onto their side. Seems like everyone's playing aggressive here. No Ooh. one's going to go ahead and get it in. And it goes in by Chura. He's going to slowly bounce it off there. I do like the 3v3 by the goal, though. You know, um, Missouri Western definitely playing it risky there by having no goalie, but it seems that uh, it did go ahead uh, and play well into their way here. I do believe the first game is going to go over to the side uh, of MWSU. MWSU. So, here we go. As you can see, uh, very well played uh, from the side of MWSU, of course. Cody, go ahead and uh, take it away here. Go ahead and have a little chat. Go ahead and tell me how you think that game went. Give me some in-depth stuff. Even though it was practice, it seemed very interesting, uh, definitely on the play style. Uh, it didn't seem as fast-paced as uh, usual games would go, but there were definitely some interesting uh, shots taken. And uh, we got some interesting, I don't know, just interesting shots here. It seemed weird from the point of view just being on one car. <laughs> anyway, sorry, I have a little bit of my own talk there. Here we go. We're going to go ahead and keep it going. It seems that we will go ahead and um, go ahead and keep it on uh, Heist position here. Uh, here we go. It seems that uh, good follow-up on that kickoff there. Heist going to be able to go ahead and make it past uh, NSU's defense there, but it seems that Chira is going to go ahead. And good. Uh, it seems that we're going to have Heist there going to actually play back near goal. I'm definitely seeing something here. It seems that Heist, what he likes to do, he likes to go ahead and try and play aggressive, but he definitely doesn't want to leave goal open. I believe that's what they almost did, but good rotation coming in from Chura. Chura going to go ahead and bounce it off past Goldian, I do believe. There it is. It's lined up, but unfortunately, uh, the defense on the side of NSU is going to go ahead and knock it away. Ooh, Chura going to go ahead and reposition himself there faster than Heist. Heist going to make it in, but it's it's an open goal. The mistake I thought MWSU was making, NSU made instead. And it seems that their goal is going to be left open. Here you gotta go. agree. Ox you taking up that quick play in that open defense. You got to agree with me, though. That goal effect is trippy. It is. I've never seen anything like that. Usually they just have a small explosion. For me. We, oh, my gosh. It's going to go in my heist. What an amazing play. Oh, my gosh. It seems that what they tried doing was a fake kickoff. Here we go. Oh, no, Jay Matthew hit it, but it managed to go ahead and bounce off, and it bounced over one of the cars of NSU. What a play coming in from Heist. Here we go. Ox going to go ahead and uh, have kickoff there, but it seems that there is good support. It seems that they're playing very aggressive now, NSU, trying to go ahead and get it into the goal. That's what they need here to go ahead and try and close that score gap. Here we go. It seems that Chur and Ox going to go ahead and play together next to the goal. Here we go. Can Heist go ahead and make it a standstill here? He's going to go ahead and get around Galdian, but it seems that it's going to pass uh, or get knocked off of yours. Here we go. Ox is going to go ahead and try and make it in there. And Chura is going to go ahead and score. 3-0 and already. Minute into the game, I believe. MWSU already making a strong effort and pulling ahead already. Here we go. It seems that here we go. We're going to have the uh, kickoff here. Ooh, Heist not going to be able to go ahead and get a... Uh, a goal there right off kickoff, it seems, but it seems that Ox and Chur are going to be able to go ahead and play the offensive there. Um, let's see here. Ice going to go ahead and try and knock it away here. Oh, Ox scaring me. I almost thought for a second Ox was going to score. Oh, but no. Oh, knocks off the cross by there. Not able to go in. Here we go. Ox going to go ahead and try and knock it into their goal. Here we go. Good follow-up coming in from Chura. Trying to line themselves up with the ball. Seeing where it's going to go ahead and go. Yours going to go ahead and try and keep resetting himself off that ball. But he's or Heist going to go ahead and knock it away there. Can he go ahead and keep it away from their goal? Ox going to go ahead and knock it away. Can. Oh, Heist going to be able to go ahead and knock it around Galdian. But unfortunately not going to be able to go ahead and get that ball in. Uh, going a little bit too fast there. Not even being able to go ahead and dribble the ball off himself there. But. Here we go. It seems that the ball back on the side of MWCU quickly going to get knocked away back on the side of NSU. It seems that Chur is going to be able to go ahead and make it around Galdian, but it seems that yours is there to go ahead and play that defense. So he's going to be able to go ahead uh, and save MWC from making another goal. It seems that Ox is going to be able to go ahead and try and make a shot there, but Jay Matthew 365 is going to be able to go ahead and stop it right there. Yours quickly or slowly making it down the field here. We go Jay Matthews and Heist going to make it go ahead and collide themselves in the air, but oh, a jump going to be able to be missed by the side. Ooh, Ooh and Heist another corner making it around hit. the defense, but unfortunately, he's going to go ahead and hit the sidebar there. But here we go, follow up coming in from Chura. And Ox, uh, brother, or uh, partners in crime, as I should say, those two are always together on the field. Seems that they're doing 
uh, this interesting thing where Heist is, if he can, if Heist can go ahead and make a play, he tries it, but then Ox and Shura definitely have to have that follow up there. And I believe that's what's going to make a difference when it comes to this, uh, the deep or these plays coming in from MWSU. There are openings that NSU can go ahead and take actually. And they, uh, MWSU really has to watch how they're going to go ahead and execute uh, this strategy that they got, have going on here. Or else NSU can come back in this game with two minutes remaining. Here we go. Galdian going to go ahead and try and get it past Heist. Heist does it. Here we go. Here's looks what I was talking about. Here's Ox. And then quickly. Oh, but it's going to go ahead and go in. Uh, it seems that Chura thought Heist and Ox had it. But again, slipped past that defense like I was talking about. Here we go. Yours with an amazing shot on the side of MWSU. Here we go. As we can see, we're going to go ahead and have kickoff here. I believe Chura's going to go ahead and fl uh, flip himself over towards the ball there. Kickoff going to be won by MWSU. It seems that the ball is stuck midfield, and it's going to be knocked onto the side of MWSU by Galdian. Here we go. Galdian going to go ahead and line it up there, but it seems that that shot and that lineup is going to be saved by Chura. Chura making it over the side of um, NSU. Here we go. High's going to go ahead and make connection with the ball, trying to get it past uh, NSU. Here we go, Chura are going to be able to follow up on Heist there. Heist playing a little bit defense here, waiting for that ball to go ahead and get lined up. Here we go, Chura's going to go ahead and make it around. Can Heist make it in? He's going to bounce Dang. it off the backside of his car and go ahead that and get it That was a in. nice hit Amazing right there. Amazing shot by MWSU's Heist. You don't, you don't ever see that in these games. No, I usually don't. It's a beautiful shot and a good lineup coming in from MW... Whoa, excuse me. Coming in from MWSU. Spit take. No, not a spit take. I saw you drink your water, spit take. <laughs> oh, Ox already going to score. I'm not even seeing. I didn't even see what happened Putting there. Putting the score 5-1 to one with a minute 17 the remaining. For me. <laughs> at the moment, it does look like MWSU will be taking this game, but we are still at least a minute in the game, so anything could happen. It's just got to be really good shots. Right. MWSU would definitely have to mess up really badly here, but Chura's immediately going to go ahead and score here. Man, this is uh, definitely an interesting place here. M NSU uh, definitely uh, looking a little bit iffy here, of course, maybe a little bit messed up. What they need to do is they need to go ahead, and during those replays, they definitely need to go ahead and like have, have a mind reset, in uh, my opinion. So here we go. MWSU going to lose that kickoff, but it seems that Chura is going to be able to go ahead and knock it over. NSU going to go ahead and reset the ball there. Going to go ahead and reset it in the corner. Going to go ahead and group up and knock it on down the field to the side of MWSU. Heist going to be able to go ahead and stop the momentum of that ball. Ox going to go ahead and prevent that shot coming in from Jay Matthew. Ox going to reset the ball, bouncing it off top of Heist's car. Here we go. Ox going to go ahead and make it down the field, but good shots and good ball resets coming in from the side of NSU. Can they go ahead and score to go ahead and try and start Stop that clock there. Here we go. It seems that Heist is going to go ahead and make it down the field here. Going to go ahead and meet up with the ball. Three. Oh, it seems that they're going to go ahead and have an open goal there, but saved by Ox. It seems that Heist definitely playing uh, defensive here. All MWSU needs to do for the next 23 seconds is go ahead and just hold that ball. Make sure NSU doesn't score, of course. So here we go. MWSU keeping that ball on the side of NSU. There goes the ball. It seems that Chura and Ox are going to be forced to go ahead and move back there. Here we go. That goal is open, but it seems that it's going to get reset and saved by Chura. Here we go. Ox trying to make connection with that ball. Definitely pushing it down the side of NSU, and I do believe at this point the game will go ahead and go to MWSU, but the ball is definitely being uh, kept in midair. Are they going to go ahead and bounce into the goal? No, it seems that Trish is going to go ahead and let that ball fall to the ground, so we'll ox there. And the second game going to go over to the side of MWSU. Very well played. Definitely a lot more cleaner shots from the side of MWSU, too. NSU letting their defense... Uh, wouldn't necessarily say fall apart, but definitely looking uh, a little rough there, of course, because uh, when it came to it, it seems that uh, everyone just seemed to be just a little bit misplaced. And uh, I definitely, that um, with those holes in that defense is what I was talking to you with MWSU trying to find. MWSU found a lot of holes there. So I believe this next game, uh, NSU Northeastern State definitely needs to go ahead and reset and then play the next game. That's all you can do, and I believe that that should be the play from there. Definitely know who's going to play what role. So, uh, very important. Have you ever played Rocket League, Darren? I have. How'd you do? Uh, I was golden hoops. You were golden hoops? <laughs> you not know what that means. I never really played Rocket League. No, no, no. I know, it, I, know, I, know, I know what hoops is and everything, but I just did not expect to hear that. No. <laughs> 
Here we go. It seems that we're immediately going to go ahead and see the kickoff won by NSU. Here we go. MWSU going to go ahead and knock it over. Ox going to go ahead and get a demo, but it seems that uh, Galdian will go ahead and go down. Jay Matthew going to go ahead and knock the ball so it prevents an opening goal there uh, or an open on their goal there. But see that Galdian going to get revenge on Ox there. Here we go. High is going to go ahead and knock it away, but it seems that's going to be saved by yours. Yours going to try and line it up in the middle of the field. But Ox and Chur are going to go ahead and knock it back onto the side of NSU. Here we go. Chur going to go ahead and try and get it in. High season opening in the oh, goal. But it is so saved by close. yours and Jay Matthew. High is going to uh, try and get a demo there, it seems, but not going to be able to go ahead and get it there. Reset over the goal by Chur. Chur going to go ahead and uh, try and re-put that momentum on the ball there. <laughs> Chur and Ice uh, get a little confused on who was going to hit the ball there, of course. Here we go. Can I, oh, it's going to go over Heist, but it's going to get saved by Chura. Chura, good read on yours. Definitely saw what yours was doing there. Here we go. Chura going to go ahead and knock it down the field. It's going to get over both, but it actually get no, it's actually knocked on top of yours. Here we go. Heist going to stop the momentum of the ball. Going to go ahead and try and get it lined up there, but it seems that Heist going to go ahead and reset. But Chura is going in. Chura is going to go ahead and try and get a shot on that goal there. Here comes Heist. Do they notice Heist? Heist going to go ahead and line it up in the middle there, but it is saved by Jay Matthews. 3-6-5 ball going to go ahead and go straight up in the air. It seems that yours was trying to get a sneaky goal on MWSU. Here we go. Can Heist go ahead and get it past Jay Matthews? Oh, is this the shot? It is. What an amazing play coming Dang. in from Heist. That was a good play, too. Got it right past Jay Matthews. Bounced it right over him. But it seems that Jay Matthews almost had the save there. Almost reset himself on the ball. But unfortunately, the ball was going too fast and couldn't manage to go ahead and try and knock the ball away. So here we go. Next agree, kickoff, 1-0. and oh. Here we go. MWSU having a strong uh, start in all th or in the past two games. Here we go. Having a strong start uh, this game as well. But again, the game's not, the series isn't over until it's over. Here we go. Sure, going to go ahead and save that goal there. Yours definitely playing aggressive there. Let's see. Can MWSU go ahead and get it in that goal? Going to go ahead and not, uh, get knocked off the bar there. Yours going to go ahead and save that goal. Sure, actually went down by a demo by Galdian. And the Ooh, goal is up to win, but Sure comes, respawns back from the dead and saves the goal. Yeah, I didn't even see him in there. there that came go. out of nowhere. There goes. Seems that Sure managed to go ahead and knock out Jay Matthews there. Here we go. Ball's going to go ahead and get stuck in the core there. It's going to go ahead and get lined up. Heist trying to look for a shot, but unfortunately can't find it. Better defense coming in from NSU, but that opening Chura coming out from nowhere, managing to go ahead and halt those plans. Here we go. Chura, what an amazing shot. Going to go ahead and knock it in. And unfortunately, Ox was stopping the goalie from trying to get near the ball, and it worked. So, NSU uh, or MWSU will go ahead and uh, find that goal there. Here we go. 2-0 and oh, MWSU. As you can tell, they're actually having a little bit of more trouble uh, with NSU here because last game they were up by four points, I do believe, uh, two minutes and 33 seconds. But NSU definitely learning how to play around MWSU now just a little bit better. Here we go. Is it going to go ahead and go in? No, Ox going to go ahead and save the goal that was shot by Jay Matthew. Here we go. Heist sees the ball, but it seems that it's going to get stuck in midfield. It's still stuck in midfield. Oh, Ooh, and what it a does shot go coming in. in by Galdian. That's what I was talking about. Finding these openings in MWSU's defense is critical to scoring these goals, it seems. And here we go. Just a little bit of a misplay by Heist, but that was the opening. And NSU is now only one score behind. As I was saying, they're getting better at reading what MWSU is doing. Here we go. Going to go ahead and line it up, but it seems that it's going to get knocked away. Great defense coming in from the side of NSU. Here we go. MWSU going to go ahead and try and find that ball there, but it seems that Ox is going to go ahead and have to reposition himself to go ahead and try and get him away. Goes going to go ahead and save the goal that was shot by Galdian. Ox is going to go ahead and try and shoot a goal there. Ox also going to go ahead and get a demo. Is it going to go ahead and go in? Heist going to go ahead and reset that ball there. Here we go. MWSU going to go ahead and uh, keep that ball on the side of NSU, but won't be able to do it. But Chura and Ox playing defense now. Here comes Heist going to go ahead and come with the rotate ball. It's going to be able to go ahead and get passed around yours, but not Galdian. Galdian is going to go ahead and knock it past to the side of MWSU. Heist there playing goalie. He's going to go ahead and dribble it over yours. Yours going to make connection with the ball and go ahead and, stipe some moment, uh, go ahead and stop Heist's momentum there. 
Here we go. Heist going to have to go ahead and reposition himself, playing a little bit of defense. Goldian going to go ahead and fly over Heist. Heist going to go ahead and not be able to go ahead and have Ooh, enough that's a close one. up there. Ball is going to go ahead and knock, uh, gonna get knocked uh, away by the cross by here. Ox going to go ahead and line it up for Heist to go ahead and try and keep that momentum going on that ball. Well, here we go. Here comes Chura. Chura is going to go ahead and knock it over. Is that an open goal? It I is. See it. it is. Chura is going to go ahead and make a goal, widening the score gap. 3-1. to one. Now, NSU needs to be able to go ahead and tie this game or get an extra goal above MWSU in order to go ahead and either take the series or tie, of course. Uh, uh, if that's not the case, MWSU will go ahead and win the series tonight. Here we go. Uh, again, this is the Midwest Collegiate League, and this is the first preseason game. So, of course, this is just a little bit of, uh, I'd say, a practice round, if I do believe. But preseason is usually the type, you know, where you start learning about how people are playing and the people are going to get to know with them, having those, you know, those, you know, and then uh, I, I like to say uh, making friends. <laughs> I agree. And that place, you know, you learn and you can learn things from each other. So preseason is usually that time to go ahead and sit down and learn. Of course, going back to the game, though, 30 seconds remaining, and MWSU is definitely up by two goals, but that goal is open, but there's Ox going ahead and quickly rotating pass. Ox is going to go ahead and hit it past the players of NSU, and it seems that NSU is going to have a good rotation. You're going to go ahead and try and stop that ball. Ox making it away, but it seems that Jay Matthew could go ahead and make it off or, or make it past Heist. Yours uh, definitely good with the follow-ups here. Heist going to be able to go ahead and knock it away, resetting that ball past the goal here, but ew, that ball's getting scary close to that middle there. Are they going to be able to go ahead and score Ooh. and NSU manages to do it but there is no time left on the clock I do believe MWSU will go ahead and win the third game very well played by MWSU looking very solid there with their team synergy very you do, well played you do have to admit though NSU did have a very strong defense and offense in the third game I'm sure if we went on to do five games another two, another three, they would definitely be putting up a more of a fight. They were getting ready. They were coming at us strong. They were ready to – they were just getting – you know, they were learning a lot about us, which helped them out a lot. Right, you know, that's what I was mentioning. You could obviously tell that NSU was definitely bringing it back. That You know, they definitely knew what they were – they definitely knew what MWSU was improving on. Uh, or what the, what MWSU's uh, type of plays were looking like. And that's why NSU uh, managed to go ahead and stop from MWSU scoring so many times in that third game because, uh, I mean, they were just starting to read MWSU very more. So, yes, you are right. They would have put up more of a fight when it came over to the uh, – when it came to – uh, those if, if it was the best of five in those uh, next couple of games. Of course, though, I think it's about time we go ahead and end this stream. Of course, and get ready for our second one, which should be coming up here in probably about, like, what, 30 minutes? Uh, I believe so, depending on the time. I yep. believe the next one does start at 7. Yep. Yep. So, Griffins, thank you so much for watching. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and end stream, but remember, at 7, so in about 30 minutes, we are going to go ahead and start up a new stream for League of Legends. So, honestly, don't go anywhere. Stick around on the uh, homepage, and uh, we'll go ahead and catch you later. What's up?
Welcome to League of Legends, one of the most popular team-based strategy games that has played around the world. League of Legends is a MOBA, which stands for Multiplayer Online Battle Arena. There are two teams of five players. There are many game modes in League of Legends, but the most popular one is 5v5 Summoner's Rift. Summoner's Rift features three different lanes in which the characters can use to travel around the map. In these lanes, teams will have turrets that protect their side of the map and attack enemies in their line of sight. There are areas called the jungle. Inside the jungle, players will find creatures that they can fight to either give them gold or to buff their characters. The basic objective to win the game is to destroy the enemy's base called the Nexus. Minions will run in groups down each lane to assist their champions. The minions can deal damage, as well as take damage. They will work to destroy enemy turrets, minions, and champions. However, the minions are relatively weak, and their major purpose is to serve as distractions or damage takers, while the champions work to take down a turret or another champion. Each player can choose from over 140 different characters and every player sticks to a different role during the game. They are defined by top lane, mid lane, jungle, ADC, and support. Top lane. Champions of the top lane are usually tough, single fighters called tanks. They focus on the opposing team's strongest members and ensure that their lane is protected as well. Tanks are characters that don't deal extremely high damage, but can take a lot. They use minions and turrets to assist in dealing damage along with their own damage dealing abilities. Mid lane. Champions of the mid lane will either be zoning the map, which aids in macro play. This helps the entire team all around. They can also be bursting champions, which deal high amounts of damage in short amounts of time. or they can be high damage dealing players that cannot take high amounts of damage but can deal a lot per second. Jungle Champions of the jungle are those who can deal high damage in short amounts of time and then escape back into the shadows of the jungle to avert enemy damage. They will also work out destroying the neutral monsters within the jungle which aids the team's side objectives that can help give the team an edge in battle. Bot lane. The champions of the bot lane are those who usually use range to make attacks and deal damage. These champions grow stronger as the game goes on and are usually the ones that carry the team to victory near the end of the game. These champions are usually weak at the beginning of the game, which is why they will have a player being a support to help them take and deal damage. Support The champions that play support are those who are good at controlling the crowd to assist the AD carry in moving through the bottom lane. They will also play around the map supporting other roles to help carry the team to victory. The supports provide aid where the other champions need it. This aid can be in the form of shields, healing another player, or dealing damage along their assisted champion. As champions continue to deal damage, they earn gold which can be used to buy helpful items and upgrades through the game. There are many items that players can buy that can enhance or defend themselves. They can earn experience points which help them unlock stronger abilities as the game continues. Lastly, enemy teams can eliminate certain creatures around the map to turn the tide of the game. At the end of the day, there are hundreds of thousands of different player and power combinations a team can use that can take them to victory. No matter how your team approaches winning the game, there's never a dull moment when playing League of Legends. Good Evening again, Griffins. My name is Scorch Darren, also known as Darren Brinks, and right next to me, Cody Doc McLaughlin. Cody, how you doing? We had a little bit of a thirty-minute break there between streams. How it you was, feeling? It was really good. I uh, went back home, saw my family, 
Okay. Stayed the night, That's came back. That's good to know. It's good to know. All righty. Well, for anyone just joining us or anybody who's still there, this is our, I would say, League of Legends night. Besides Rocket League, of course. But yeah. we are going into our ECAC of League of Legends tonight. We got MWSU Griffin Esports up against Pace University. Uh, like I just mentioned, it's our ECAC. It's a best of three tonight, and this will be their second match in the purple division. It seems like they went up a division because I do believe they were in pink division, came back with the title and a trophy for the pink division uh, championship. Yeah. And now they're up in the purple division, if I do know. But as of right now, MWSU, uh, I wouldn't say a rough start, but they are uh, starting off their season 0-1, and one, and Pace University is starting off their season 1-0. and oh. So maybe MWSU tonight will go ahead and even out those odds there, uh, going 1-1. One and one. So, Cody, how's your League of Legends information? It has decreased. Actually, you know, I'm kind of curious. Um, no, I still remember all the stuff I remember last semester mm -hmm. that I remember learning. But I actually do have a question about this league that I'm very curious about. Go on. What is the order of these divisions? Last was pink. We went up to purple. We're now in purple. I don't know what the next well, one is. Well, I, I want to know. Like, that's what I'm curious about. I'm guessing, like, what? Gold is probably the top division? Or I'd say maybe this? somewhere up there, diamond. <laughs> diamond <laughs> probably. probably. Who I'm knows? just curious on like really... how the levels work like that. Uh, I, I wish we would know about that, but um, which I mean we can easily do our research. It's not that of hard. Of course. Uh, but uh, I mean I, I've learned a couple new things too. I've focused more on the characters. I watched yeah, the good. TV show Arcane on Netflix. Oh yeah. Yeah. What's one of the characters from Arcane? Jinx. What's another one? That dude with the white hair. With the white hair? Yeah, and the baseball bat. Hoverboard? Man, I haven't even seen Arcane. I don't know why I'm asking you these questions. Yeah, you <laughs> shouldn't even try. Jays, Caitlin, Vi, all those fun people. No? I don't think Tom Kench was in there. But actually, actually put it would have been cool if Tom Kench was in there. Just going to put my honest opinion in there. But <laughs> that's just me. It seems that our players are going to go ahead and set up their pro draft first. Cody, uh, can't go ahead and take a look at it right now, but I will go ahead and give some information out here to our viewers. We have uh, one new player on the main roster. Her name is Elfamp. Very excited to see what she has to show tonight. Uh, as usual, uh, we do have, uh, uh, typically, I'm uh, just going to go ahead and go through it. We do have Amon and Zepho in the bot lane. As uh, you do remember, they were the powerhouse they were. of uh, the team last semester, of yep. course. Not saying that they were like, Decimating, caring, of course. Of course, you know, it's all just a team effort and it's a team game there. But they were a force to be reckoned with. I remember that because I remember what uh, last time in the videos, I remember uh, Zepho support. Yep. He was able to keep up with Amon, uh, heal him. Uh, definitely a great support that I've seen uh, out of all the people I've seen play. Right. Uh, and then you have uh, Amon with insane amounts of eliminations, taking crowds of them out at, like, n not even once, but, like, Finishing big battles, obviously with the support of Zepho backing him up in healing mm -hmm. and attacking at the same time too. Right. Which uh, multitasking right there is amazing. Multitasking. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, I believe that's how it works. But yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, it was insane. Sure. Yeah. You know, Amon and Zepho definitely uh, having that synergy down the bot lane. Uh, of course, beforehand, uh, before they started off their semester, which actually did start off with. Uh, if I'm going to be honest, it actually started off with a very rough win, but then on out, you know, Dark Ice Slims used to be the ADC for MWSU Griffin Esports, and then uh, what happened is is that uh, we found Amon. Amon didn't necessarily want to play mid, so they decided to swap, and now Dark Ice Flames, um, again, originally the ADC, has now find uh, kind of, I'd like to call it her calling. She's definitely way better in the mid lane than she was uh, in the bot lane. Bot lane was so fast-paced, but now she has full control uh, of the full control... Uh, what is the word I'm looking for? Full control uh, when she's in the mid lane and she can go ahead and play her own game, really. Yes. And then, uh, of course, as usual, in the jungle, we did have Straw Hat Luffy, also as Nate. Um, definitely, uh, he's new to the roster as of last semester. Nate definitely, uh, he actually never played jungle until last semester. And then uh, when we all found out that he was a Poppy one trick, which is obviously trained, but we, we found out he's a Poppy one trick. Mm. The Poppy was definitely... Mm. Uh, as I've explained, Amon and Zepho, uh, it definitely scary. Uh, there were times where 
uh, Straw Hat Luffy would get caught out, but then all of a sudden, like, he wouldn't go down alone. He would dive under the tower. He would trade kills. He put Missouri Western up uh, more at a forward um, segment of the game. He definitely uh, definitely pushed their lead forward. They definitely – or he would help definitely snowball, as we like to say, of course. Uh, uh, anyone that doesn't know, snowballing is where you have this lead and you turn it into something bigger. It's like if you take a snowball and roll it down the hill, it's only going to get bigger, right? I've always wanted to test that theory. Uh, it's not true. It turns into a wheel. Is it because of that Instagram video that's been around? I think so. Yeah. I still want to test it out myself. Okay. Fair enough. You're one of those people that isn't proven until you do it yourself, I guess. Would that be the I thing? mean, I do believe in the Loch Ness Monster and Bigfoot, but that's more of a personal belief. <laughs> Well, I believe in the flying spaghetti monster. So, uh, Hey, <laughs> when pigs fly. <laughs> Anyways, up in the top lane, of course, we do have, uh, as I mentioned, um, Elf Vamp. Elf Vamp uh, definitely uh, improved from last semester. I know I uh, wasn't on the main roster, but now that we've lost uh, Tyler, who originally was our top laner, who definitely had some great plays. We will always remember Tyler. Uh, I believe he's in some schedule confrontations there. So very very now nice to Elf Vamp. Yeah, no, uh, Tyler was awesome. He definitely set up a lot of plays uh, for the entire team, especially when he was on NAR. I remember having these giant ulties where he would jump in, shove everyone against the wall, they would get stunned, and then it would be up to Ammon, Zepho, and everyone else to go ahead and do damage. Yeah. So it was definitely uh, very nice to go ahead and see those plays. Definitely those plays definitely uh, helped uh, make uh, make them go up to the top and then it win the pink division. So uh, it was awesome. It was awesome. And so... Uh, Elfamp, what I do know is I'm going to go ahead and go through what I do remember. Things can change, but what I do remember are the uh, champions that MWSU has played. So when it comes uh, down to Zepho and Amon, Zepho, definitely not a tank player, if you want me to be honest. And so uh, do you remember any tanks, Cody? Who do you remember? We're going to quiz you just a little bit. We're going we're gonna to have our fun here. Was, and I, I feel like I'm already wrong about this, but was Tom Kinch a tank? Yeah. Okay. Tom Kench was definitely That's a tank. That's one. Uh, Bruiser, maybe even. But, yes, Tom Kench was definitely a tank. Okay. The next? That was just a question. I just needed you to name one. <laughs> cool, because I don't know anymore. You win. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> Anyways, but Zepho and Ammon. Zepho definitely uh, definitely likes to play uh, the uh, Enchanters. I remember a lot of Lulu. There was a, a – between Ammon too, Ammon played – uh, Vane definitely uh, pulled out some pocket pick there. And when it became to the Ammon and Vane, they definitely crushed the bot lane. It was it was great to watch. It definitely was fun seeing them pull ahead. But Ammon, of course, a bad thing with Ammon that I did notice last semester was that Ammon loved diving under that tower alone and definitely getting caught out. Definitely getting greedy for kills. And then it would set them back just a little bit, of course. So, uh Ammon and Zepho, I don't know what's new now. I'm hoping to see Jinx from Ammon. It's one of my favorite characters, of course, like you mentioned earlier from the show Arcane. I love Jinx. Jinx is awesome. Um, Varus, too. Varus probably is not high up in the tiers at all, but I do love to see uh, Varus. Varus is definitely one of my favorite characters. Reasons why I hit gold. So, anyways. So, anyways, I do believe they are finishing up their uh, pro draft here, but as I'm going to go ahead and continue through here, Dark Ice Flames on the Ari, of course. I will go ahead uh, uh, move up to the mid lane there. Dark Ice Flames with the Ari. Definitely a good pick, in my opinion. Uh, definitely when it came to those last fights last semester for the finals in the pink division, Ari would be a reason why the fights and the game would continue on, because there was that one point where Ari literally had to kill three people, and that's what she did. And it really led that game on to win for MWSU, waiting for Ammon uh, to get even more into the late game from or get into mid to late game. So it was definitely one of those things where uh, Dark Ice Flames really came in clutch. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so in those fights. And then now, of course, uh, I do believe I already brought up Straw Hat uh, Luffy with the Poppy. Uh, a lot of different picks. Uh, of course, I'm sworn to secrecy not to share some of them, so I'm not going to. <laughs> um, anyways, but... Uh, Straw Hat Luffy, I do remember the Poppy. The Poppy was definitely a devastating pick. Uh, I can't really remember any of the picks that came in from Straw Hat. Uh, but Straw Hat Luffy, I do remember one of his pocket picks is Poppy. And it's really scary, too, to see uh, a Yordle like Poppy running at you at full speed under tower, knowing that you're not going to survive. Can't flash when she's using one of her abilities, too. So, uh, yeah, it's pretty terrifying. <laughs> Poppy is the, uh, and if I'm correct, Hammer. 
Yeah, okay. As cool. the hammer. Yeah, yep. I'm right. <laughs> Anyways, Elf Vamp going up uh, from my own personal experience with uh, playing with Elf Vamp and playing with the team, of course. Uh, but probably uh, a year ago, I do know that Elf Vamp definitely liked the split pushing. But uh, from what I'm hearing, there's definitely been a change in champions there. So I'm very interested to see uh, what we have in store to go ahead and see tonight. So, Sadly, since we couldn't watch the last game, I'm actually very curious on... The picks. Exactly. So I'm, I'm very interested in how they have changed evolve uh how things are now after a whole break and then the first three maybe four weeks of uh just when college started back up i'm, I'm very interested now on how the team has changed especially with now that they've been playing for an entire year now too i they, mean they started out well, with a whole new roster last i semester. agree with you i'm also mentioning like uh, with the uh l vamp now on the team the new coach uh uh billy <laughs> yep yeah, uh, I know he Very has a lot of, yeah, I, I've heard that he's gone places, uh, especially for League of Legends. I'm very interested in what he ha- is teaching them mm-hmm. to see, and I'm sure he has a bunch of new moves that we will definitely get to see in here uh, compared to last semester. I know I didn't know a whole lot last semester, but I started to understand things, and I'm interested right. in to learn what's going to happen now. And maybe so immediately, maybe back when back I see one of the moves, I'll immediately know, like, oh, my God. That's cool. I didn't even know about that. It does make sense, though, with this and that. It'll be very, very very interesting to see what they have up their sleeve this semester. Right. I couldn't have said that better myself, but it does seem like we are going to go ahead and get into our ban and pick phase, of course. So it seems that they already went and did their pro draft. What pro draft is is they go through and they do the picks on uh, a website, and then what they do is they just bring it over to the client so everything's set and ready to go. So, immediately on the side of Pace University, they're going to go ahead and ban Volibear, Janna, and Caitlyn. Uh, very interested uh, about the Janna pick. Might have been a Zepho ban. Uh, I don't know yet, of course. And on the side of MWSU, they are going to go ahead and ban Irelia, Akali, and Zaya. So it seems that they're definitely targeting top lane, mid lane, and uh, bot lane when it comes to Pace Univ- or uh, when it comes to MWSU uh, Griffins and then Pace really uh, doing the same thing as well but banning a support instead of doing a mid laner because what I do know is that Volley if things have changed but Volley is uh, maybe a jungler or a top laner still uh, of course immediately on the side of MWSU as we can see their picks they are going to go ahead and pick Malphite and Hecarim that's definitely already looking like an all in team comp uh, team composition. Uh, especially with the Vigar, very interested to see. I've never seen uh, Vigar. Uh, Vigar is a mid laner, so Dark Ice Flame is picking a Vigar. Very interested to see where that goes. Now, on the side of Pace University, we also have uh, Gwen, uh, Zinzao, and Kasten, so that's also going to be very interesting. I want to know what their team composition is like. Cody, while well, they're going to go ahead and go into their next band phase here, really quickly, go ahead and give a roll call of what uh, are the team names or who's on each team. Go ahead. Do roll okay, I'll do the best I can because uh, the screen's not fully there. Quote with me on that. Yep. Uh, let's go ahead and start with the Pace University side. Then we'll get to our MWSU players. Sure. First one on the other team is, if I am correct, J Y E Angelo. Angelo. Yep. Then we have, I believe, Kerm. Kerm. Yeah, Kerm. Yep. I believe Kerm one seven. Then we have. Su- Kasai. <laughs> Kasai? Kasai, yes. Oh, that was a Z for Actually, a second. Actually, that's how my little brother used to say Kaisa's name, so it makes perfect sense to me. Yeah. And then we also have, I believe that's... E-Bladder? E-Bladder. How are you seeing these? I think you're on better quality than I am. Thresh, Zemu, one, two, three. Yeah, All right, do the Z-Mu. MWS. You say. Let's go. Okay, that one I at least know off the top of my head. We got L-Vamp, obviously, as the first on the roster. Then we got Straw Hat, Luffy, Dark Ice Flames, Amon, and Zepho. So, again, we already <laughs> know about a lot about our team. Uh, I'm very interested to in see how Pace University plays. I don't know if we know uh, exactly what their win-loss ratio is right now. Obviously, we've only played one They've match. They've won one game. That's all we know. So, at the moment, it is 1-0 versus 0-1. But, then again, it's still the beginning of the season, so anything could happen here. We could go 1-1. They could go 1-1 after this. Hoping that's the case. But, again... I'm sure that they got a lot of moves up their right. sleeves. I know our team's confident. They're not ready to back down, and they're ready to play. Yeah, sure. And so uh, before we go ahead, uh, I might even talk for the entire thing of it. Who knows how much I want to go ahead and say here. But it does seem uh, with their p- the rest of the picks and bans on the side of Pace University, they did go ahead and ban the Zach and the Oriana. Now, I do know Zach is a very good jungler. He's definitely an all-in character. So it seems like we're definitely having team fight oriented 
uh, fi- uh, team fights that we're going to go ahead and see. And I just knocked my mic away. Whoopsies. And um, <laughs> they're very team oriented. You shouldn't do that. So when it can- <laughs> thank you. Can't come out of your paycheck. When when it comes to these team fights, it's definitely going to. I'm very scared of the casting, of course. But before I go into that, I'm just going to continue my thoughts here. In the bot lane on the side of Pace University, we have Jin and Thresh. Definitely one of my favorites, of course, after being a Jin main for like the past year. Uh, definitely love uh, to see that. But of course, on the other side, we do have Lucian and Nami. And I do know that Lucian, from personal experience and knowledge, Lucian does go very well into Jin. Now, of course, it's all going to come into the factor of. Can Thresh land a hook, and can not, or can Nami go ahead and land a bubble and stun someone? Because I do know that Nami is very squishy, even compared or compared to a Thresh. Um, so definitely, the bot lane is definitely going to be an interest that I have towards this game here. But I'm also very interested to see where Vigar and Kassadin are going to come in because I know that Kassadin, with my own knowledge, Kassadin has a silence and it's going to be very hard for Vigar to go ahead and try and fight the Kassadin because once Kassadin gets his ultimate it's sort of like a teleport and whoever he teleports on it does damage and Kassadin is definitely I, I'm definitely scared of the Kassadin of course but when if the Vigar if Vigar is let alone and Vigar is able to go ahead and uh, farm stacks with his Q uh, whenever he farm stacks with his Q by the way for Vigar um, he definitely or he gains uh, ability power, which is magic damage. Yeah. Okay. And so that stack, it, it stacks the entire game. You don't lose it. So if you let Vigar get too far into late game and they are able to farm well, Vigar is definitely going to be one shotting a, a champion on the enemy team. And it's going to be scary because his ultimate also scales with uh, his, yeah, his ultimate also scales with. Uh, missing health, and I believe it's an execute at 33% damage or like 22% damage. I can't remember uh, the stat there, but of course, uh, going up uh, above into the jungle, Hecarim versus Zinzel. Uh, I'm very curious to know because I do know both of those, uh, maybe primarily Hecarim, if I do remember. Uh, Hecarim does uh, have a better clear. Of course, he does definitely have, uh, I believe, an AoE uh, area of effect uh, ability, so he's able to just go ahead and swing uh, what I do believe is a scythe, I think, or something like that. And it's definitely able to go ahead and hit things that are in front of him uh, in a group. So uh, he's definitely going to have a fast clear, uh, depending on how that leash goes. Uh, same thing with Xin Zhao. Uh, I do know uh, Xin Zhao has great healing, but I'm not so sure about how fast he can go ahead and clear uh, camps in the jungle. Now, up to the top lane, Malphite versus Gwen. Um, that one's definitely open-ended. I do know Gwen is a little bit more squishy, but I also do know that Malphite is squishy early game. So I do know Gwen might have a little bit of an upper advantage uh, when it comes to uh, the early game. But late game, uh, or before I go into late game, I do know also Malphite is squishy and he uses a lot of mana. Uh, mana is used uh, to use abilities. If you run out of mana, you can't use any abilities, of course. Now, not all champions use mana, of course, but uh, I definitely... Uh, I'm not going to go into that talk, of course. I uh, do have some nice skins on the Rift. Uh, final boss, Vigar. Uh, I do want to say that I had a talk with Dark Isms the other day, and I told her final boss, Vigar, will make this uh, will make playing Vigar ten times better. So I did uh, mention that to her. It seems that everyone on the Rift besides Gwen has a skin, and we are going to go ahead and go in on our first game here as uh, it does seem that the spectating uh, definitely freaking out on me here. Uh, but anyways, as I was talking about with the Gwen and the Malphite, um, with the Gwen and the Malphite, uh, Malphite, again, uses a lot of mana and is definitely squishy. So um, we're going to go ahead and wait for this. Going, I'll go ahead and continue on. If you have any questions, feel free to ask, and then I can go ahead and ask that, of course. But Cool. Quick uh, question. Yeah, go. What is League of Legends? I'm just messing with you. Go ahead. Get Tanya. I'm big keeping up. Go I ahead. I expect that one. No, but uh, of course. So League of Legends is a 5v5. <laughs> just go into the whole lore of it and all that. But so... So, uh, as of right now, I've gotten word that our spectate is uh, broken, it appears. Of course, that's always fun. So, uh, yeah, we definitely hope that uh, <laughs> Riot fixes the issue. It's been a known issue for the past couple of weeks here. Uh, I do believe, I can't tell if we're going on a break or ending the stream, though. I'm going to go ahead and wait for a, an answer up in there in my little earpiece. Um, but, of course, uh, I don't believe we'll be able to go ahead and stream the first game. So, we will go ahead and take a short break here, and we'll go ahead... Yep. Okay. Yeah. Sure. All right. So, anyways, we're going to go ahead and try and uh, fix the issue on our own. And uh, 
We will go ahead and take a short break here. Uh, if we can't manage to fix it, we'll go ahead and end the stream, but we'll let you know that, of course. So we'll be right back, Griffins. Don't go anywhere.
Alrighty, welcome back, Griffins. We managed to go ahead. Um, uh, I wouldn't necessarily say fix the solution, but we went with the next best thing. So we are going to be watching the perspective of Dark Ice Flame. So this will be more or less of a player commentation. Of yeah. Course. So, uh, of course, all the same thing. Uh, anyways here, but as we see we are going to be doing most of commentating on Dark Ice Flames the mid laner of MWSU So as we can already see a couple of trades going in here Cody I can start teaching you the stuff about lanes too and all that other fun stuff So here we go as we can already see Vigar already pushing in the lane here uh, Dark Ice Flames That was the silence I was talking about earlier when it comes to the Cassadin Cassadin already going to go ahead and get stunned Cassadin already getting pushed out Dark Ice Flames pushing a little bit too much under tower there Oh, excuse me, pushing a little bit too much under tower there and already taking a tower shot, of course. So, that's all right. Here we go. Dark Ice Flames already winning uh, when it comes to the mid lane. Bot lane already going to go ahead and grab a kill. Double kill over to the, uh, what uh, seems to be Ammon here. Ammon surviving on one health. Very well played on the side of MWSU, of course. I'm very... Uh, this is a very new pick for me, by the way, when it comes to Dark Ice Flames playing. But it seems that Dark Ice Flames is going to be overpushed just a little bit too much. Can she go ahead and make it out? Ooh, can she actually trade with the Cassidy? And here we go. It seems that we're going to go ahead and have Zepho. Zepho with the double bubble. Can he survive? Oh, Ooh. no. It seems that Zinzao is going to be able to go ahead and grab the kill off of MWSU Griffin's mid laner, Dark Ice Flames. But that was very well played. The rotation coming up from Nami was very well played too, of course. But more well played on the side of Pace University. Finding out that Dark Ice Flames is a little bit over pushed. And uh, making her go ahead and walk down. Or just finding her uh, caught out. Uh, that would be the word I'm looking for, of course. So they managed to go ahead and waste a flash. And Dark Ice Flames is going to have to teleport here so she doesn't miss any minions in the lane. Cody, any questions? So far, uh, no. I think I, I'm keeping up pretty well with what's going on. Oh, good. Alrighty. As we can already tell, as I was talking about Vigar, if you let Vigar stack here, Var Vigar already has plus 40 extra ability power. So uh, definitely where I see this going is that if Vigar isn't taken out, Vigar will one-shot someone, as you can see. So every time he goes ahead and kills a minion, those little creeps you see, uh, with a Q, uh, and it exe executes them, they will go ahead... Um, uh, it, it gives her an extra stack. So here we go, as we can see, at 43, now at 44, uh, as you can see. So that was a good prime example there. Here we go. And then uh, 46 extra AP here. Uh, Kassin playing off here. See that Kassin's definitely going to be able to go ahead and wait uh, for his jungler to go ahead and help him out here. Because as, as I see right now, Vigar is definitely... Uh, more empowered uh, than Cassidy right now until Cassidy starts hopping on people uh, and then one-shotting them because I have a big fear of Cassidy, of course. Uh, as you can see, uh, Cassidy did have a little bit of a teleport move too, so um, I'm very scared how this is going to go. As you can see, yeah, see, Cassidy went ahead and teleported out of the stun. So as of right now, uh, the stun seems to be just a little bit, uh, I'd say, in these one-on-one -on -one fights, just a little bit... Uh, Unprioritized, or it's not really a priority to use. You just need to be able to go ahead and poke with the Q or the W, of course. So, uh, definitely going to be uh, more rough fights. Slowly going to go ahead and lean more towards onto the Cassidy uh, there, of course. It seems that uh, Ammon and Zepho, as we see by the bottom right mini map, are going to go ahead and uh, make their way back to bot lane. Uh, Ammon already hitting uh, level six, of course, at nine minutes. So, um, uh, I definitely can't tell the gold difference. What I can tell is that since uh, MWSU's probably had probably about maybe like 200, 250 right now. So uh, as I was going on about casting into, uh, people might say, like, can Cassidy always use um, use his ultimate? Well, the thing with Cassidy is that every time he uses his ultimate, his ultimate use or in order to use his ultimate, it goes up in mana cost. So he's not able to go ahead and spam it constantly and use it 24-7. Here we go. We can see a gank coming in from the Hecarim. Can uh, can Kassadin escape? Kassadin going to go ahead and ult away there and managing to escape here. It's going to be very hard to go ahead and gank that Kassadin, especially with a Zenzao with the counter gank, uh, as we saw he was there. So uh, Hecarim going to go ahead and move on over uh, to uh, uh, his Wolves uh, camp over on the... Um, bottom top right that's going to be a very interesting uh, way to explain that he is going to go ahead but see he's at his blue buff he is going to go ahead and give it to dark ice flames so that dark ice flames doesn't have to suffer uh the mana usage so in case any of you are wondering uh blue oh almost <laughs> i thought it was going to go over to uh, straw hat luffy there but it's not so now dark ice flames has increased mana regeneration as you can see by the bottom of the screen it says plus 19.7 instead of the usual and uh that's because there is now more extra mana she's gaining per second so 
Uh, anyways, see that Hecker or uh, Nami is trying to find a little bit of an engage there, not able to find it. Here we go. Doing very well with CS2. 67 a minute. Dark Ice Flame's definitely better uh, with the CS. So. Uh, very, uh, very glad to see the improvement on that, of course. But as soon as I said that, gonna go ahead and miss the minion with a Q, of course. But that's all right. Um, we're starting to look at. Uh, actually, I can't do the math. But here we go. Casting gonna be able to go ahead and try and find, uh, or gonna go ahead and try and find that assist here. But Dark Ice Sims can't stay because they are gonna go ahead and come mid. You gotta go ahead and walk away there. Uh, Dark Ice Flames, and that's what, exactly what they're going to go ahead and do. Dark Ice Flames might actually recall. No, not exactly. It seems. I wonder how top lane's doing, too. Maybe if we get a tap press in there, uh, here and there, I can go ahead and tell. But it seems that uh, Malphite's going to be able to go ahead and be forced to go ahead and sit uh, on that tower there. Dark Ice Flames uh, slowly grabbing the CS here. So as of right now, it's going to be a little bit of a slow game. But if I am correct, it's about uh, 2 to 1 uh, when it comes to uh, kills on the board, I believe. Uh, but it seems that it's, that's now going to go ahead and change. Hecker, I'm going to go ahead and grab a kill on the Thresh. But it seems that down in the bot lane, Amon is going to go ahead and go down with Straw Hat Luffy. It seems that that's a one fight uh, on the side of Pace University. So Pace University is slowly going to go ahead and move ahead there. Probably in gold, uh, if I can assume. Again, our spectator tool, I can't really tell who's ahead or who's not. All I can do is commentate, which is my job. <laughs> Anyways, Dark Ice Swim is going to be able to go ahead. Since Cassidy's missing, she's going to be able to go ahead and grab that extra gold too. Wanting Cassidy to go ahead and miss out on the gold. But Cassidy is going to go ahead uh, and use the TP as we saw there to go ahead uh, and not miss as much uh, gold as he could. So, uh, as we can see, we do see uh, Elf Vamp up at the top lane. Uh, probably... Uh, alive <laughs> that that's the first good part as i should say uh definitely uh, as it seems it seems that uh malphite is being pushed under tower by gwen but again if you let that malphite go ahead and take a lot of the creeps uh and get all that gold there malphite uh, or if you can't really like suppress a malphite malphite is going to be devastating late game because as you uh, if you do remember malphite is an all-in character yeah Mal his ultimate literally he just turns into a giant wrecking ball and he goes into the enemy team and whoever he hits uh they get knocked up uh that's why uh, i was mentioning that already with the hecarim whose ultimate is literally an all-in he literally just he he rides in it's it's <laughs> that's the best way i can explain the ultimate with the malphite ulti it's going to be very well played here but as we can see we can already see straw hat luffy getting caught out here but here comes the nami we might see some kills over to the side of mwsu and we do we have a good team fight coming in from mwsu lucian already going to be able to go ahead and grab another kill uh good supporting too coming in from uh zepho here as we can see it seems that this will go ahead and be a dragon play of course with the mountain drake uh, I don't believe it'll be Mountain Soul, but, you know, we'll go ahead and figure it out <laughs> when we get there. But uh, Mountain, I do believe, increases uh, armor, if I am correct, uh, just a little bit. So here we go. They're going to go ahead and pull out that dragon so it's not easy for Pace University to go ahead and jump over that wall and try and take it. Let's hope Straw Hat Luffy can go ahead and smite in time. Here we go. I believe Dark Ice Swims are going to go ahead and save our E ability so they can't hop in, but they're not going to go ahead and hop in anyways because I believe Ammon actually went ahead and took out the Zen Zhao. Zen Zhao getting caught out there without his team. You definitely cannot catch yourself out straw hat Luffy gonna go ahead and hop on over to the gromp so here we go it seems that like they're gonna go ahead and grab those sorcerer boots for that magic penetration so here we go gonna go ahead and make her way down back to mid lane of course uh here we go gotta watch out for that cast and might lose a little bit of gold there but they did get drake and an extra kill so i see that it's more worth on the side of mwsu uh griffin esports so here we go. Dark Ice Flames Kassin going to go ahead and meet up there. Kassin looking to get a little bit of uh, beefy there with that health, of course. Seems like Kassin wants to kill. Kassin being a little greedy here walking up on Dark Ice Flames like that. But Dark Ice Flames, oh, it seems that Dark Ice Flames is going to go ahead and try and bait herself. But unfortunately, a missed gank by uh, a Straw Hat Luffy. Seems that Kassin managed to go ahead and see that Hecarim. And uh, Kassin went ahead and uh, te teleported uh, away with his ultimate. That's why I'm saying it's going to be hard to go ahead and gank that cast in, and since he's able to get out of tough, situ uh, tough situations uh, really easily. So uh, very curious to see how that cast in might actually try and snowball, uh, which actually hasn't really started yet, uh, in my opinion, but it's definitely going to be interesting to go ahead and see him late game. We are reaching 50 minutes into the game here. Cast in and going to go ahead and miss both of his abilities there on Dark Ice Flame. So it seems that Zen Zhao up in that top river, as you see, is going to be able to go ahead and go in on there for that gank. Ammon already on a killing spree. It seems that that, that, that bot lane, as I was talking about, they are forced to be reckoned with because I believe Ammon's already 4-1 and one or 5-1 and one, um, 
Can't necessarily see that right now, but that's all right. Of course, so here we go. Dark Ice Flames uh, going to be able to go ahead and CS well here. She already is up uh, to about, I believe, 128 CS, so or 128 extra AP. So here comes Straw Hat Luffy. Going to go ahead and try and uh, get on that casting. And casting going to uh, go ahead and uh, ult away there. So uh, it seems that we're at a, a very big standstill when it comes to... Uh, to Dark Ice Flame. So here we go. Dark Ice Flame is going to go ahead and get the level up there. Level 11 going to put that uh, second mark onto her ultimate. So her ultimate is actually what's going to be uh, decisive on what wins a team fight or not. As you can see, Straw Hat Luffy 2, if we go ahead and pay attention, it seems that like there's a fight down in the bot lane. Gwen actually went bot lane, but it seems that like Gwen's unfortunately going to go ahead and die here. Uh, Dark Ice Flames, are they going to go under tower? Oh, these are easy kills for Dark Ice Flames. Dark Ice Flames is going to go ahead and follow on that war, get the free 75 gold and the, or free 30 gold, but and here we go. It does not seem that MWSU is done. They're going to go ahead and try and find themselves going behind tower, trying to grab kills. But it does seem that Dark Ice Flames getting a little confused here, trying to stick around or not. This is definitely an interesting one, but it seems that they really want that first tower, that extra gold. So I honestly cannot blame them uh, for when it comes to... Uh, there's your little bud, by the way. Scuttle Crab. Scuttle Crab. You remember it. <laughs> okay, Stink Bug. <laughs> stink Bug, yeah. <laughs> he looks smaller than he used to be. What? I don't know. It looks smaller. Yeah, maybe that's because you're not used to the game. What? Do they, is it all different sizes? Do no, they, they're all the same. The last one we saw was probably, you know, you know, protein powder working out, hitting the gym and stuff. <laughs> this one looks like he's still in middle school. Well, from all the dead scuttle, scuttle crabs, what did that protein powder do? Absolutely nothing. Juiced them up. <laughs> Juiced them up. d Ah! Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, Dark Eyes Flame is going to be able to go ahead uh, back and recall there and go ahead and finish her Luden's Echo. So uh, deciding on whether or not to go uh, Cosmic Drive um, or Rabadon's Death Cap. I usually save Rabadon's for uh, late game, of course, get that extra AP boost. So here we go. Ammon and Zevo are going to be able to go ahead and rotate. And that's why Dark Eyes Flames is going bot lane because you definitely don't want to leave bot lane open, especially after getting mm -mm. that first tower. Mm -mm. So... Uh, definitely don't want to lose the defenses there, but Dark Ice Flames. Dark Ice Flames might actually be able to go ahead and actually one-shot the Thresh for the Jin with the way Dark Ice Flames is farming right now. Easy gold right there. So here we go. Going to be able to go ahead and grab one. Not going to be able to grab that extra one. But Kasten also rotated down to the bot lane. So right now the game is purpose uh, purposely or um, intentionally uh, even right now by the other team. Here we go. Kasten might actually go ahead and try and hop on Dark Ice Swims. That's a lot. That's a good little chunk of damage, actually, but it seems that Ammon is going to go ahead and take out the Thresh, and it seems that MWSU is going to go ahead and take a Rift Herald. So here we go. Dark Ice Swims is going to be able to go ahead uh, and stay alive here, too. So it's uh, very well on her. Keeping her space away from the Kasten because she knows that the Kasten is doing a lot of damage now. Dark Ice Flames is going to be able to go ahead and take out the back couple of minions there. Can Dark Ice Flames get away here, though? This is what I was talking about. Kasten can just go ahead and stay on her like that. And Kasten is going to be able to go ahead and take out Dark Ice Flames there. So unfortunate so you can't you can't you got to keep that space between you and the cast but they gave a mage uh, lucian is actually gonna go ahead and grab a kill in the middle lane. but they gave they gave a mage who does mass damage and literally it's called literally his nickname is Castlewin instead of cassadin this is why because they'll start sooner or later start just one-shotting everyone on the team which gets really annoying after a while here straw hat luffy they need to go ahead and take out that tower oh he's not gonna die for it though i honestly would have said grab the tower and then you know at least die for it. but with that now they're just losing gold mwsu uh, might need to play just a little bit smarter than that but it seems that uh with that thresh though uh that gap closing between uh them and the team fight uh went ahead and happened there and so uh straw hat luffy went ahead and got pulled under the tower so uh, very unfortunate, but MWSU still on a strong lead here, too. So, looking at Zepho. Zepho waiting to see if they are going for Dragon. It seems that we're going to go ahead and see a rotate from MWSU. As we can see, we can see the vision in the bottom right jungle um, at the river entrance. We are going to go see if they are on Dragon, and that's exactly where they are at. Can they go ahead and take out the ward, though? Here we go. They need to go ahead and go in here and take out Am or and protect Ammo, though. Here we go. This is a team fight we might need to see here. Lots of damage going on to the Thresh. Dark Ice Flames having a little bit. Don't want to get caught out here, but it seems that that's what they're going to do. But it seems that Pace University will go ahead and get away with that dragon, of course. So 
very uh, well played on pace. University managed to go ahead and find that lead that they had there or that uh, advantage they had and then went ahead uh, and tried taking the dragon. And that's exactly what they did too here. Elfamp not exactly uh, managing to go ahead and find that team fight either. So they really do need their mouth fight there though because without that mouth fight, there's less of an engage and then it'll turn into Hecarim going in alone and probably either luckily surviving or going down with... Uh, a slow follow-up, which would not be the best terms for MWSU. A anyway, little bit of a water break for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if I'm uh, correct, Dark Ice Slam at the moment is just uh, guarding the lane, making sure that uh, while Yeah, but her... we actually might see a team fight down to the bot lane, but it seems that they actually might actually just uh, waste, a t uh, might actually try. They actually, okay, so what they did there was uh, is that they were probably engaging in a team fight. There's probably a miscommunication there because they couldn't tell if Pace University was going to go ahead and go in on them. So it's actually a wasted teleport onto the side of MWSU Griffins, but here we go. This is might actually what we need to go ahead and see here. We have a kill already going to this, uh, go, already going to Zepho. Dark Ice Flames knowing that everyone's going to go ahead and rotate to the bot lane, and Dark Ice Flames is going to go ahead and focus on clearing that mid uh, mid lane and getting that tower because with four down in the bot lane four are going to have to go ahead and go counter that but if there's an extra person that goes ahead and leaves that mid lane open they are going to go ahead and rotate but I believe what they're doing now here is that they're going to go ahead and split up and MWSU might actually get two towers so there's one tower on the side of MWSU and I believe another one will be coming here shortly due to looking how the map is they're just going to have to wait for that wave down in the if I'm correct if I'm correct according to the map right now in the bottom yep. uh, right someone is currently taking out one of our towers Hours. Uh, I do believe so. Yes, Gwen is doing something what we call split pushing. Uh, while MWSU was distracted on getting the mid lane and the bot lane tower, nobody was up there to go ahead and defend their top tower. So actually, Gwen has completely opened up that top lane, and the only two towers left standing in top lane are that base tower there, the wall tower, or it the tier three tower, as you could call it, and the... Uh, Nexus. Uh, other tower, other so. than the minions, uh, uh, minions, right? Henchmen, minions? Minions. Uh, being able to obviously have a free path there if none of us are there. And I know that's one lane, two lanes is better compared to one because it's twice the amount of minions sure. that are going to be going at it. But is there any way of a huge advantage? for Pace University to be over MWSU University at this moment well, with that one free lane open. Well, what really happens here is that they, if they keep forgetting about the Gwen, Gwen will literally open up that entire top lane. And you definitely don't want that happening because if they get that inhibitor, uh, allied super minions start sp or enemy super minions start spawning. So whenever you destroy an in inhibitor, right, whatever lane that inhibitor goes to, uh, it will spawn um, super minions in that lane, which means there will be a lot more pressure put on the lane. But that could also be a good thing because enemy um, or super minions also give more gold. So if you open up one lane and give the enemy enough time to go ahead and farm off those mm -hmm. super minions, then you you sort of put yourself in a bad situation there. And I think. Uh, that's why they didn't necessarily continue. Of course, Malphite was already going up to meet Gwen up in the top lane, but they weren't necessarily uh, going to commit to that inhibitor because it would put MWSU Griffins at that point to where they can go ahead and just get more gold. Because I do, re uh, maybe right now it might be tied in gold, but MWSU might be a little bit ahead in gold. I don't know. But we are also uh, 23 minutes into the game. We're starting to get into that mid game. Uh, area, of course, and then uh, leading up into that uh, late game will definitely be uh, could be a change of pace uh, towards MWSU Griffins because hyper carries uh, like Cassidy will start to go ahead uh, and scale really hard. So uh, okay. MWSU Griffins will definitely need to go ahead and try and keep their lead here and try and keep taking these objectives to pull ahead even further. But, uh, especially with Jin too. Uh, Jin is definitely scary, but here we go. Dark Iceland might actually almost get caught out there, but uh, they have no vision. Uh, Pace University doesn't really have vision, uh, not that I know of, of MWSU. I can't really tell, but it seems that Nate, uh, Straw Hat Luffy, will go ahead and get caught out here. Dark Ice Flame still going to go ahead and back here, but it seems that that's going to be a fight that's going to go ahead and go on. No, it seems that they're all going to go ahead and walk out of that enemy jungle. It seems that Dark Ice Flame is going to go ahead and back for that cast. And now Dark Ice Flame needs to only defend tower. She doesn't need to really fight. And uh, if she fights, I'm going to be honest, Cassidy will win that fight with the way Cassidy is uh, from what I know. At least level so, one. Here we go. Ammon already going to go ahead and be godlike. We see that Dark Ice Flame is going to go ahead and TP in. Amazing TP 
uh, and stuns coming in from Dark Ice Swims. Dark Ice Swims is going to go ahead and grab one kill. Can they grab another? Seems that Ammon's going to go ahead and grab a triple kill. Not quite the co uh, quadra like they wanted. Here we go, Dark Ice Swims. Oh, can they go ahead and keep Ammon alive? Oh, it seems that that fourth bullet going to hit Dark Ice Flames. And they are going to go ahead and win that fight. Here we go, Ammon's going to go ahead and go over. Here we go. Can Ammon go ahead and grab the unofficial quadra kill? They need time to go ahead and grab this dragon, though. So chasing kills like that probably wasn't the smart idea, but they did manage to go ahead and grab it. And I do believe they will go ahead and play risky there, but will uh, grab this dragon. So here we go. It seems that's like a free dragon over the side of MWSU with nobody able to go ahead and contest it. MWSU going to go ahead and uh, grab Ocean Drake. So and they got very the well played by they got MWSU. The scuttle too. They did. They, get the, uh, they did get the uh, stink bug, the famous stink bug, as we like to say. If the thing doesn't stink, I'd love to have that thing as a pet. You know, in Valorant, there is a, on, uh, I believe the map split, there is a bin of scuttle crabs. Like, for like a, a, a restaurant. And I'm like, <laughs> that actually, it kind of made me sad to know that just scuttle crabs are just food to people. You know? So I respect the well, pet comment. I mean, uh, Dark Eyes, so I'm just gonna wait crustaceans, for the like shrimp and stuff, I mean, yeah, they're meant as food. I mean, if it's a scuttle crab, then yeah, I could see that. Yeah, it's very unfortunate. Remember, this world is just food to something else. <laughs> yeah, the food chain. <laughs> Anyways, here we go. It seems that we're going to see Dark Eyes Flames uh, pairing up with Zephyl here, just trying pushing this lane here. But we do have an allied turret destroyed. Seems like Gwen's trying to go ahead and put their uh, themselves ahead. And, uh, ooh, a little bit. <laughs> Dark Ice is going to use about four abilities there, uh, missing the minions. <laughs> That's very unfortunate, but here we go. Dark Ice Sims and Zephyl again partnering up here. Now Ammon's here, so this is a very devastating team we have here because that is a one-shot. That That is a glass cannon comp we have going on. If they're not careful, they'll get one shot, but if they are careful, they'll end up one-shotting someone else. So they are definitely glass cannons. Uh, you definitely got to be careful of that, so... Dark Ice Flames. See that we got four people here. It seems that uh, we have and a Malphite down to the bot lane. But Cassidy's actually split pushing, so they have to watch out for that Cassidy up in the top lane. I about to say, I saw her list uh, up on oh, the Oh, are they going to one-shot him? Oh, Jin gets one shot. Cassidy not being able to go ahead and stay top lane. Cassidy actually is going to have to go ahead and rotate down as we see Cassidy's no longer up in the top lane. Cassidy might actually try and come from behind and sandwich them. Uh and try and gank them, but it does seem that Dark Ice is going to go ahead and try a recall here. Uh, it might be stopped, who knows, but it seems that, no, Dark Ice is going to go ahead and get that recall off. Dark Ice Swims is going to go ahead and go for Rabadon's Death Cap as her second item, uh, excluding boots. So, uh, with all that AP, that's uh, very dangerous. So, here we go. Dark Ice Swims uh, actually has about 800 uh, ability power here. That's, that's pretty scary, uh, of course. So, sitting at around, yeah, uh, six, seven, uh, yeah, 800, uh, 830 AP. That's definitely scary because that's, if played correctly, one shotting potential, as we saw with that gin. And, uh, especially with, uh, Vigar's really annoying E ability, which stuns if you walk into the walls of it. Definitely a lost team fight if played right. And so, um, I'm definitely seeing how, uh, the chosen picks now. For MWSU Griffins, I'm definitely seeing how of uh, how they're all coming together now uh, and what their champions are doing for each other. So I agree, uh, I agree. Very well played. Um, shout out to Billy, then, right? What are those rocks right there on the right? Krugs. So we call those Krugs. 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 Yes. Krugs. Are they like some volcanic like rock creatures? Yeah, they're rock monsters. Cool. Uh, I remember the old ones, the really blocky ones that used to like run at you. Is is funny. <laughs> Do they run at you? Like. Do they run at you funny? Those, yeah, they're like dogs. They just kind of hop to you. Oh, that's boring. That's boring. I'm messing with it. That's so kind of cool. It's cute. it's cute. Is that what your pet's gonna be? Yeah, I want a Krug. Yeah, actually, we might see her go for Krugs right now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. See, they just kind of run at you. <laughs> oh my god, that's. Oh my god, she's. Oh, they're taking out the little ones. <laughs> they're taking out the little ones. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Hey. Dark Ice Flames is just trying to stack. As you said, it's just how the food chain works. You know what I mean? Here we go. Gonna that's go. not food chain. That's eliminating. Yeah. 
<laughs> Anyways, uh, Dark Ice Flame is going to go ahead and continue to... Oh, we might actually get a fight in the mid lane there. And that's where Dark Ice Flame is going to go ahead and go. Dark Ice Flame is the teleport. Going to go ahead uh, teleport and trying to support a team. But the fight might already be over. It seems that like MWC is taking over in this fight. Amon, Amon is, legendary is legendary. The double kill. Is he going to go ahead and go for the triple? Can they? That's what's important. Here we go. It seems that like they're all going to go ahead and push up here. All low. Ooh, what a good um, good follow-up coming in from Amon there. But Gwen went ahead and went into her invulnerable state. So it seems that Gwen there didn't really see much presence of Gwen this game. Here we go. Gwen's going to get caught out here and really stuck because of the Vigar uh, E ability. So uh, Gwen's going to get caught out there. And it does seem that MWSU Griffins are going to go ahead and might actually take this game. But they are going to go ahead and rush for that dragon knowing the respawn times on the enemy team. So... Definitely, uh, definitely watching out there uh, for the enemy team. That Jin just got back up, and that Jin probably would have done a little bit of damage considering, uh, or maybe not, I don't know, but I'm just assuming Jin would have gotten up, had that extra little speed boost because we are past 20 minutes, and when you respawn, you have that speed boost. So definitely would have been uh, rough to see a Jin uh, come back into the game like that if they managed to go ahead and say so. Good call. Uh, yeah, good call onto the side of... Uh, I'm losing my breath here. You're <laughs> good. You're good. MWSU, uh, definitely uh, making a good call. That's what I meant to say. No, Amon is 15 and three. I just realized that that is definitely an AD carry doing its job along with the support of Zepho. That is. I actually that is have scary. a quick question for you Go on, on the gold currency. Okay, so gold currency. I obviously. Every player uh, in the game, you know, eliminations of minions, players, and the creatures in the game, dragons, scuttle crab, uh, the, the block creatures you said. Uh, the Krugs. The Krugs. Ooh, Obviously, they earn the there. gold to do power-ups, like power-ups, leveling up, stuff like that to make them stronger. Yeah, everything gives gold in this game. Okay. Yep. Here we go. We might actually have a little bit of a team fight there. Hold that thought, Goaty. Here good. we go. Kassin and almost going to go ahead and get caught out there, but so will Nate. But Nate's going to be able to go ahead and take out that Kassin. Amon going to be able to go ahead and take out their top laner. Here we go. Vigar going to be able to go ahead and grab a kill. Hecram grabbing another. Here we go. And it seems that this will be the end of the game for MWSU Griffin Esports League of Legends. There we go. A nice, clean game coming in from... MWSU Griffins, but now Pace knows what their team comps are going to be like. So, uh, actually, come a uh, little bit faster there. <laughs> They're just trying to end the game as fast as they can, of course. There we go. They cleared out the minions, and now they are going to be able to take out the Nexus. There we go. Very well played on the side of MWSU Griffins. Definitely playing around Amon and Zepho and waiting for them to go ahead and scale. GG. That will go ahead and turn into, and I do believe... Uh, we might actually go ahead and take a short break here before the next game starts. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and need confirmation on that one. But what MWSC went ahead and did right there was they just played as a team. And so, of course, uh, we will be right back. All right, sure thing. We'll be right back. Griffins will take a short break. Don't go anywhere.
All righty. Welcome back, Griffins. Getting right into the champion select. Welcome back. This is the League of Legends. What I do believe is the League of Legends. That is not the right one. <laughs> the League of Legends ECAC. Uh, MWSU won their last game just a couple, like 15 minutes ago. But uh, they are up against Pace University, as we can obviously see. Or not see. Never mind. That's on my screen. But as we can see, they, did, they are up by one game. So I'm very excited to go ahead and see... Uh, what we have in store now that Pace University knows how MWSU likes to play, obviously around the bot lane. Definitely interested to see how they're going to go ahead and play here. They have swapped sides. So uh, going into it, as we can already see, there is on the side of MWSU, we have the Zaya, Irelia, and the Akali ban. And then on the side of Pace, we do have the Caitlyn, Volley Bear, and Karma ban. So almost the same bands as last time uh, as last time but not quite so already on the side of MWS Grims, we see the Malphite the Olav and the Vigar uh, already looking like an all-in team comp uh, it seems that pace uh, did already go ahead and ban out the Hecarim so Olaf was probably the next best thing uh, at Pace University already going to go ahead and choose Camille Zach and Victor so this one's also going to be interesting definitely team fight oriented once again Cody what do you think well, based off how the last one went, uh, I mean, to be honest, this is already going to throw me off considering they're switched guides again. This, this is this threw me off last time because I was always looking at, oh, we're red and then we're blue. But anyway, uh, with how it is, they know our play again? style and we know they know where how we're going to be playing it again. I'm assuming uh, they have a trick. Our team has a trick up their sleeve because they were uh, last game threw me off, but then I started to realize what they were doing mm -hmm. with how they had. One person in each lane. They were obviously focusing more in the lane when pushing in Amon's lane because out of everyone on the team, he does push very, very aggressively at a level where it's hard to compete against. And that's right. why... Uh, and then you'd also see Elvamp holding top lane, uh, Dark Eyes holding mid, and then them mainly at the bot lane. But you'd also yep. see Zeph continuously go between just mid lane and bot lane and also uh, Straw, Straw Hat Luffy uh, going in between all the lanes, helping out when needed, especially when they were being pushed. Mm -hmm. And really, it was each one of them had separate but sometimes the same goals. And obviously, thanks to that, they were able to push. I'm very curious on how they're going to push this one because I know right. the, now that uh, Pace knows what they what they did last one, I don't know if they're going to be able to get away with it again. So I'm expecting to see something new and different again. Right. Um, yeah, honestly... Uh even, even though, you know, just like last game, though, uh, this is a whole new different game. So I'm curious as well, too, as how this one's going to be played out. Yeah. But we are going to go ahead and hit our spectator delay. So we're going to go ahead and take a short break here. Don't go anywhere, Griffins. We'll be right back.
All righty. And back to us. All righty. Welcome back, Griffins. That was our spectate delay. We just usually wait for that to go off. And, well, now we're here. Going to go ahead and wait for spectate tool, I do believe, to go ahead and pop up here. Uh, just in case there are technical difficulties. Well, and No, there's not. All righty. Perfect. Love to see it. We are on Dark Ice Flames. Uh, perspective once again here we go starting off with the farming as per usual now I'm definitely as much as I was afraid of the Cassidy I might be just a little bit more afraid of a Victor especially with Victor's how, how his abilities adapt over time here Dark Ice Flame slowly losing these trades is this a level two I already see here now I don't know what the abilities are that uh, Victor took uh, I hope it's not an Ignite because if it's an Ignite that's definitely uh, going to be uh, maybe some early kills over uh, onto uh, their side. So. What, what's an Ignite? An Ignite? Ignite's a summoner ability. So you know how they gotcha. have like teleport and flash? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ignite's one of them. Barrier's one of them. There's a lot of them. Clarity that nobody uses. <laughs> That's uh, There's a lot of them. And so um, uh, usually people only take a couple depending. It's all usually about the lane. So uh, Dark Ice Flames now, if Dark Ice Flames took Ignite here, the the fights would actually be a lot back and forth. So here we go. It seems that uh, Mr. Kasai is going to go ahead and try and take out Dark Ice Flames here. But, oh, it seems that we are going to go ahead and see a gank here. Dark Ice Flames. Dark Ice Flames is going to be able to go ahead and uh, slowly play her game. So it does seem that our spectate delay is actually working. So what we're going to do is we're gonna actually going to go ahead and go back in time, uh, if I do believe, right? <laughs> and we're going to go ahead and uh, might go on over to our little spectator here. So, yeah, this is it. Yeah, we went ahead uh, back in time here. It seems that we do see everyone uh, as usual uh, early game. It seems that uh, Mr. Kerm17 is going to go ahead and try uh, and uh, put a ward down. going to go ahead and see uh, where MWSU is. Now, this is what I like to see. This is what I like to see. We can see the entire map. We can see what the cooldowns are. I have now been open to a new world of spec uh, of shoutcasting. <laughs> no, but it does seem here. As we can go ahead and see, we see the Camille and Malphite in the top lane. Straw Hat, Luffy on the Olaf, and the Zack in the jungle. Dark Eyes Flames, as we saw, Vigar against the Victor in the mid lane. Amon and Zepho in the bot lane on Lucian Nami. A good combo as usual. And then we do see Ash and Thresh down in the bot lane. And so Ash and Thresh, now that is very dangerous because all of Ash's abilities or most of them reduce or put slow on the enemy. So if you're hit with an auto attack of hers, you're slowed. If you're hit with a W of hers, you're slowed. Uh, as we can see, we see where those uh, first couple of fights started actually in mid with a couple of uh, shots taken at each other with Dark Ice Flames and uh, Mr. Kasayan Victor uh, where they were just slowly poking each other out. Uh, very aggressive, <laughs> obviously, for an early game, but you know what? That's perfectly okay. And so, uh, going on here, we see Straw Hat Luffy going to be doing two uh, camps at once. He's going to go ahead and try and uh, keep himself up with the Zack uh, jungle clear. So, here we go. A little bit more poking coming in here. Uh, slowly going to go ahead and start. We'll slowly start and catch up with the game uh, as soon as it's done. So, I'm on here. Just earlier, while we got a time on here, gold currency, how you're able to uh, spend that between, you know, power-ups, levels, and uh, to make your character stronger. Sorry, what? What was that beginning of that? You remember how there's the gold coins? Yeah, in the there's game? The gold. And you use it to buy like power ups, abilities, yeah. and all that. Convert that to actual real American like yes. cash. How much would it be to buy McDonald's? Like a Big Mac. How much would it be to buy McDonald's? Yeah. I'd say maybe about 5,000 gold. Also, just for uh, noticing, I still can't see uh, the game on my site. So, Cody, you got any questions? Uh, where the scuttled crabs come from? I don't know. Oh. The void, maybe? What's the void? The void. Oh, God, he's going to get me to a lore story. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, we're back over to the side of Dark Ice Flames. Sight here. Uh, going to go ahead and focus on her until we can go ahead and get the uh, overall thing back up. Or maybe not. Who knows? Who knows what happened? I definitely don't. <laughs> uh, here we go. Uh, Download an Adobe Flash. That's what happened. Adobe Flash. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> here we go. As we can go ahead and see, Dark Ice Flames going to be able to... Oh, Victor already has an updated... Uh, I believe it's his W ability, the giant laser. Um, so in the first stage of his ability, he can go ahead and use something called like the Hextech Coil. I do. Mm -hmm. Oh, and we're back. Alrighty, yes. But Victor can go ahead and use something called like the Hextech Coil. 
And what that does is actually, we might actually see a little bit of a tower dive in here coming from Ammon. Ammon could have already been taken down to half health with the help of a tower shot too. That's a lot of damage. You definitely don't want to be uh, putting yourself in that low of health at that position. But here we go. Ammon, unfortunately. Ammon's going to go ahead and flash away, but can Ammon survive? Ammon's going to go ahead and get flashed on. And it seems that this will be a one fight in the bot lane. Pace University, unfortunately, being taken out here. It seems that Zepho can't defend himself because of no mana. Double kill over the side of Ash. As you can see, it's 0-5 right now. Pace University up by 5. Alrighty, and that gold difference is only getting wider and wider. So, here we go. Moving on from that Dark Ice Swims. There's that bird I was talking about that was uh, just passed on the left side of the screen. Giving sight of the jungle. Uh, knowing and figuring out where Straw Hat Lovey is is good information. Knowing that they can go ahead and push here safely. And Botland's going to lose a lot of gold from that. But, as you can see, Amwan is ahead in uh, CS. So, maybe the gold difference there is probably really even. Uh, but, as we get into it, as I was talking about... Uh, Victor has, like, uh, a Hextech uh, item that he can buy, and whatever it does, it, it upgrades his ability to, or any of his abilities to their so-called Stage 2. Now, as you can see here, uh, if Victor can go ahead and do it here, I believe he will go ahead and use that laser ability. Now, what that laser ability does is that on Tier 1, it just is a laser. That's it. It just does damage. But at Tier 2, what it does is it explodes, as you can see here after following its pass. Uh, right, following its path. There we go. He is actually going to go ahead and try and take out Dark Ice Flames there, but uh, unfortunately his ultimate will not be able to go ahead and connect. Ammon actually might go ahead and get caught out here, but it seems that it will be a fa failed gank by Zack not being able to go ahead and hit his CC ability. So, uh, onto the side of Kusai. He's going to be able to go ahead and manage to go ahead and push Dark Ice Flames far back from their tower. So, unfortunately, not being able to go ahead uh, or very or suppressing uh, or putting suppression on Dark Ice Flames. So, um, very unfortunate. But uh, Dark Ice Flames, again, not exactly out of the game. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm really saying is that Dark Ice Flames uh, will be just a little bit behind, of course. Straw Hat Luffy going to go ahead and try and make a play here, waiting for them to go ahead and push up. But it seems I am on. Oh, it seems that we're going to have an amazing hook coming in from Thrash. There we go. Didn't really see uh, the Zack there. I, just, I don't believe that they're going to be able to go ahead and actually try and... Um, kill or take out the Zack there. No, it seems that Ammon's actually uh, going to go ahead and try and go down with a kill, but it's not going to be able to make uh, a connection with it. So Dark Ice Flames managed to go ahead and heal up and take out, but what an amazing gank coming in from Pace University. 0-7. Seven. seven kills up and definitely up by almost 5k gold. Definitely a strong start early game coming in from Pace University. Uh, definitely a change of the ways uh, that we saw from last game, so here we go. Dark Ice Swim's trying to go ahead and take out this victor. Dark Ice Swim's getting really low there. It does not uh, seem like Zepho will be able to manage to go ahead and try and steal Dragon there. So Dragon going to be able to open and go on, uh, go on over to Pace University. Now, Cody, any questions? I had one, but it slipped my mind. I, li <laughs> I, gotcha. I literally just had it in my head, and sure. it was actually a really good one, I thought, but it just slipped my mind. Right, here we go. Teleport going to go ahead and come in here. Is Zepho going to be able to go ahead and try and follow up on that teleport? No, Zepho's going to be able to just go ahead and take out those minions. Minion gold is uh, not going to be able to go ahead and be wasted uh, going out. So here we go. Very curious to see how this top lane is going to go. It seems like Camille is already up by 50 CS. That is a big CS gap already. Dark Ice Swims. It does seem that MWSU is very behind here, actually. So, moving on here, it does seem that uh, with Camille and how much they've been CS, and Camille's already going to have 150 gold bounty. Here we go. Camille's already going to go ahead and try and fight that Malphite. Can Malphite go ahead and escape? Malphite's going to be able to go ahead and walk away. It seems that Thresh and Zach, with how far they are ahead, they managed to go ahead and rotate to the top lane. So, here we go. Ammon's going to be left to go ahead and clear uh, bot lane there. Trying to get all that solo XP before Zepho shows up, and that's exactly what's going to go ahead and happen. Here we go. But Zepho and Ammon are now back together again, leaving Ash alone. But Ash is 3-0, and along with Zach being 3-0. and Here we go. We might actually see a tower dive here. Here we go. Can they go ahead and execute it nicely? Ammon going to be able to go ahead and walk away, and so will Straw Hat Luffy. But it seems that we have a TP coming in from what seems like Victor. So it seems that that middle lane is now open here. And what we definitely want to go ahead and try and see here is 
Dark Isom's trying to take it out, but oh man, Kerm17 almost going to go ahead and be alone here. We're going to get a flash coming away from Zepho, but actually, if we see this correctly, Zepho is going to get in a power auto, or Kasai is going to get a power and auto attack off executing Zepho. Here we go. MWSU uh, Griffin's planning to go ahead and grab their first kill there, tower diving, but for what? It seems that the Zach and Victor are now even more ahead than what they were. So good play on MWSU Griffins, but Pace University did expect it. So uh, Shutdown Gold going to go ahead and go over to what I believe is Ammon there. Ammon ahead by 13 CS compared to that Ash. So that actually might be pretty worth it. But as you can see, there are three bounties under the side of Pace University. So you definitely want to go ahead uh, and try and get those off. So here we go. Kerm 17 going to be able to go ahead and take his blue buff there. Uh, as I was talking about, uh, Zach is one of those champions that doesn't use mana, I believe. So uh, that's just one of those uh, fun facts. <laughs> Anyways, Cody, if you're going to ask questions, now would be the time to ask because I feel uh, like MWSU is going to play a little safe here. I, I, I've been still thinking about that one question. I can't remember what it was. I gotcha. I don't want to. I remember you were talking about uh, it was around the time that I lost it right whenever uh, they were trying to uh, hard when it was Amon Zepho trying to hard push mm -hmm. the statue or sentry. Yeah, what about it? They were trying to auto it? Yeah, and yep. it was something that they did that made me question something. Tower dive? Yeah, it wasn't that though. Oh, wow. Oh, barely any damage. That's going to be able to go ahead and go on to Victor. Victor's with that uh a uh, new item. Uh, I cannot remember the name of it. That's also going to go ahead and sub my Oh, what an amazing gate coming in from both uh, Ammon and Zephyl along with the follow-up of Dark Isom's catching that Victor out. Victor is going to go ahead and lose the bounty, and it will go over to Ammon. There it is. Those are the bounties going over to Ammon. You definitely don't want to lose those. But Straw Hat Luffy might actually get caught out here. Late rotation coming in from Malphite. Can Malphite go ahead and help out here? Is there going to be enough of a damage output? Here we go. Oh, it sees that Malphite's going to go ahead and get stunned. What an amazing ult coming in from Ash. They need to go ahead and escape. Is, is Zach going to make it out alive? He's healing, and he's not going to make it out alive. Malphite's going to be able to go ahead and get that extra gold there. Bounties being lost on the side of Pace University and MWSU, slowly starting their upbringing by closing that gold okay. gap there. I got two questions. Okay. One, what? Uh, out of curiosity, I noticed that MWSU, uh, their, uh, it looks like one of the turrets was destroyed uh, by Red Team, so Pace University did get one tower or sentry. Yeah. Um, anyway, back to my question. Why, uh, you, you know the game better than me. You know some strats. Six um, years of my life, Cody. Yeah, six years, <laughs> I know. Uh, <laughs> Ammon's going to get caught out here by what seems to be uh, Victor and the Thresh. Am I not going to be able to do much? He's only going to have to be able to stall. But continue your question. My apologies. Why do you think some of the players on MWSU, what did, what's the strat of them picking the same character again and only two of them changing? Well, I mean, it. well, so I believe some of the bands, with the way that was, with some of the bands, uh, they managed to go ahead and try. And how do I want to put this? They managed... So what Pace is doing is they know that they don't want to risk playing up against the same character again. So they obviously banned out some of the characters that were played. Uh, and so uh, Pace University could go ahead and grab uh, the Hextech Drake. Um, just saying. But continuing on, um, what seems to be is that, like, when it comes to... Like, if it's working, don't change it. That's usually the way it goes. Because Nami and Lucian are a really strong pick duo to have in the bot lane. So, like, why change it if it's strong? You know what I mean? I agree, I agree. And so, uh, going on from that, that's pretty much the question I can give you there. Uh, it, it works, obviously. I mean, Amon is now only 2 and 3 instead of 0 and 2, so uh, he's definitely brought himself back into the game because he is 141 CS, and that's the highest CS I see in the entire game besides Camille, who has 160. So Camille's actually doing really great uh, on CS2. So I'm very <laughs> scared to see how uh, big that Camille is actually going to start in being. But here we go. We have Zach going to go ahead and try and come in, but Zach going to be able to go ahead and back off there uh, after jumping over the wall. Uh, definitely don't want to mess with that Zach. This is definitely a beefy team on the side of Pace University. Here we go. And the only thing about Camille, too, is that she's very strong, especially with her passive. Uh, depending on what your character does, her basic auto attack will give her a shield depending on 
what type of damage the person does. So Malphite does AP damage. If she auto attacks a Malphite when her passive is on cooldown, she will go ahead and uh, she'll go ahead and gain a shield for AP. But as we do see a small team fight down to the bot lane here, who will go ahead and survive? See that Straw Hat Luffy's ultimate's going to go ahead and run out, and unfortunately he's going to go ahead and get taken down there. Yeah, it still seems that MWSU is just a little bit behind, and they are exactly able to fight there, uh, even with. Uh, Olaf having a gore drinker, not being able to go ahead and keep into that fight there. So here we go. We're going to go ahead and see a sweep reward coming in from Zemu123, uh, the Thresh, uh, clearing out vision here. So it seems that Pace University, you got to be careful with the fights you take or else you either put yourself deeper in a rabbit hole or, you, or deeper into um, a hole or you'll bring yourselves uh, back on the uprising and put themselves uh, above the other team. So you definitely got to be careful what fights you take. Yeah. Uh, since we uh, have a small little chance to. Yep. Obviously, for Zach, the uh, blob is probably the best way I can explain him. The goo, yep. Yeah. Uh, I know he's not uh, pink. I know it's a skin. He kind of looks like bubblegum. Yep. But what is he exactly? He's a blob, Cody. I know a blob, but it seems more to it than just that. Yeah, I don't necessarily know the lore of Zach. Uh, I just know he exists, and he's really annoying. (laughs) <laughs> That's I mean, I can tell, like, seeing this gameplay, he he definitely looks annoying because I saw in a part where uh, I believe it was, um, I think it was actually Straw Hat Luffy, where he kept attaching and pulling himself closer to him just to hit him. I'm like, wow, that must be really, really annoying and hard to counter. Yeah, so you mean, like, when he stretches his arm out to one person and then the other, and then he knocks them together? Well, I meant like he was just attaching himself to Straw Hat Luffy, constantly pulling him closer. Yeah, uh, so uh, closer actually there's that's a two-part ability, right? Yeah. So he can attach himself to one, right? Yeah. And it slows the person he's attached to. But if he hit, if he attaches his other self, which is the second part of the ability, he knocks the two together, stunning them. So it's actually – so, I mean, yeah, it's very well played here. Oh, but this is what happens when you fight in the wrong jungle. Here we go. It does seem that Camille's going to get caught out here, and the shutdown's going to go over to uh, – Dark Ice Swims there. Very well played, and that's why you never fight in the enemy's jungle. I should have brought that up earlier. And that's a, is that a golem? Risk. That is blue buff, yes. Blue buff. So golem is another term, or is it just blue buff? Yes, blue buff. Okay, cool. He um, actually dances. If you have a certain character, I believe Ari, and you have the disco skin on, and you dance next to blue buff, blue buff starts dancing. And that's red buff. They start dancing? Yeah, they start dancing. That seems like a very weird thing to add to a PvP game, but I guess it makes sense. A little bit of an Easter egg. Does he keep dancing while someone does damage to him? No. (laughs) No, he will definitely fend for himself. Okay, cool. Uh, I'm guessing Red uh, Red Buff is the same way. Yes, and almost. Oh, it seems that Thresh might actually go ahead and get caught out here. Zemu, now I'm seeing the damage come in from MWSU Griffins. Uh, Definitely... uh, Definitely can see Pace University slowly, maybe, uh, you slowly see MWSU Griffins uh, catching up here slowly, definitely seeing themselves start to hit that uh, that uh, mid-game here. So, Straw Hat Luffy could go ahead and get that red buff. In case anybody's wondering, red buff does add uh, a fiery passive to your auto attack. So, if I hit someone, there's going to be a little bit of a fire ticking away their health. So, uh, and not broken, of course, but just uh, a little bit more of that support. Uh, to help you win those fights here, so seems more like just an advantage of Ooh, getting. Ooh, red something. team going to go ahead and summon a Rift Herald up top, uh, up in that top lane there. Uh, definitely want to apply pressure there, as we can see. Angelo definitely keeps winning those lanes up against Elfamp, so uh, definitely got to be careful there. Uh, just got to watch it as long as Elfamp can go ahead and try, um, can go ahead and try and just defend and not really uh, have the Camille, you know, distract the Camille is what I mean. But it does seem the third Drake might actually go over. To Pace University. I don't think they're going to make it yet. Can they steal? No, it does not seem that they can steal. And Straw Hat Luffy and Dark Ice might actually go ahead and get caught out here. But we do see a teleport. Oh, can they make it out alive? Elf Vamp, unfortunately, not being able to commit to it. MWSU Griffin is going to play the safer route and walk away. Here we go. It does seem uh, what I see here is that uh, we need to go ahead and get a tower onto the side of MWSU Griffins. Oh, here comes the counter. Here we go. Let's see. They are going to go ahead and grab the gold here. Big ultimate coming in from Malphite. Can there be a follow-up to it? Elfam going to have to go ahead and flash away. Here we go. Here we see Zach going to go ahead and try and come in here. Targeting the wrong person. Zach probably should have gone in on someone like Vigar, but targeting the tank is always a bad idea, but it would have worked in MWSU's favor. 
Here we go. Amon not being able to go ahead and do anything about the Camille. Amon going to go ahead and let Camille have that tower there. So here we go. Angelo going to be able to go ahead and walk away here. Uh, we still have a bounty on that – or a new bounty on that victor for about 200 gold. 150 now uh, as the game go ahead uh, and processes – or uh, continues uh, with the time going. So uh, by that middle counter, that's how I know. Uh, four kills to 12. Pace University definitely a little bit ahead here, but they're only up by 6K uh, gold. So uh, – or as what it seems. So uh, 6.1K gold. So – uh, definitely right now we're at a standstill. Right now it's just going to become farming and who can go ahead and pull ahead uh, in those items, of course. So Angelo going to be able to go ahead and rotate bot lane. Definitely want to go ahead and try and protect that tower. Uh, now there is a funny little symbol I've never seen before in the bottom right corner of my screen. Um, and it's on the mini map. I have never seen that before. So I'm very curious to know uh, what's going on. Down Which symbol? There. Down in the bottom right, up in the mini map. I know. Which one? There's a lot of symbols. There's a little blue one. Bottom right. Mini map. Very far bottom right. Yep. Yep. Down to the bottom right. <laughs> I don't know what it does. Blue circle of power? I I, I guess. <laughs> the pie. The circle blue pie. No, not that. Just the blue circle of power. Oh, okay. I thought I was being a little funny there, but <laughs> I guess not. Anyways. You'll get it sooner or later. Amon, unfortunately, getting caught out there by the Camille. He managed to go ahead and find himself in that jungle, so... Here we go. Zepho, Dark Eye Swims, and Straw Hat Luffy. Going to go ahead and find themselves uh, in that game there. So, uh, let's, or in the mid lane there. So, sorry, completely messed up one mind blank. Uh, what does seem to be uh, happening, though, is that they have to, they're watching out what happens in the jungle here because you definitely don't want to go ahead uh, and get caught out here, or else uh, Pace University will go ahead and uh, find themselves uh, winning another fight, actually, because I do believe that MWC Griffin is still just a little bit behind here. Uh, but it seems that they are going to go ahead and try for Baron. Here we go. A little bit of an engage coming in here. Thresh missing his hook. Can MWSU try and stop the Baron? Here we go. Teleport going to go ahead and come in here. Here we go. Dark Ice from managing to go ahead and find Ooh, a kill. Here we right go. There. Double knockup coming in from... or. Um, uh, one knockup coming in from Malphite here. Can Malphite do anything? It seems that and, uh, Pace is doing the right thing here and targeting the squishies and not targeting the tank here. It does believe that Pace University will actually go ahead and win that fight, only losing one, and they will go ahead and go for Baron, but they're going to keep going for it, and Stry, I love he's going to find an easy kill on top of that Ash there. Here we go. Can Amon manage to go ahead and find a couple of kills here? It's lined up for him. He's going to go ahead and grab one. He's going to get knocked up, though. Good Zonia's Hourglass coming in from Kasai, here we go. Straw Hat Luffy and Zach are in a little bit of a 1v1. Can he go ahead and win? Straw Hat Luffy slowly falling behind here. He's got to stop that healing coming in from Zach here. Here we go. Kerm 1-7 is... Oh, he's still healing! And he's not going to survive. Here we go. Kill over to Straw Hat Luffy, I hope. Straw Hat Luffy got to get those auto attacks in. Can he keep the auto attacks in? Let's Man, go. What a fight coming in from Straw Hat Luffy. Literally the most uh, trading kills I've uh, seen so far, uh, even from last semester. There were trading kills here and there, and there were kills being taken right before going down Scuttle Crab. <laughs> uh, but uh, amazing fight right there, and amazing right. comeback from MWSU. Definitely. Uh, I, I don't, to be honest. It was definitely more in favor of MWSU because it of that was. Baron. Yeah. If that Baron was taken by Pace University, they would have lost that fight. But because of how they played and how they re-engaged, Pace managed to go ahead. Uh, I'd say that fight went pretty even besides Straw Hat Luffy coming out on top. I agree. But I definitely say that it was worth because Pace now doesn't have empowered minions. Especially uh, with, uh, with Elfam coming in right at the beginning, taking one of them, and then the next one being Dark Ice Flames, Amon, and then Straw Hat Luffy coming in too. Zepho helping also with support and healing them up. And without him also, we would have gotten those. Amon's going to take red buff here as I was talking but, about those empowered auto attacks. Now, see, MWSU needs to go ahead and take this Drake here, or else uh, Pace University is going to go ahead and get Mountain Soul, and they will have I an I see overshield. another big fight coming in right here. We have at least... Most right. of the players here right now, uh, 3v4 at the moment, and we're still waiting on a couple more. Amon's actually behind. So here we go. We're going to have Zach going to go ahead and engage here. Good engage coming in from Zach. Good ultimate coming in from Zepho. Straw Hat Luffy going to be able to go there ahead and just grab one. Can Amon's actually going to go ahead and go down. It's going to be careful. And it seems that Pace University is actually going to go ahead and pull ahead in this next match. Do I see a quadra kill? No, Zach's going to go ahead and take the triple kill, of course. But... 
It's a good setup and good uh, disengage from Drake and onto an engage on the dragon there. It does seem that Pace University is going to go ahead and grab the dragon's soul. So they are going to go ahead and have that overshield. And the dragon had a gold, uh, a gold buff gold buff to it. More had a bounty on it. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the gold's going to go ahead and go over to Pace University. Now up by 7k gold. Definitely finding themselves ahead here. And definitely pulling ahead further and further away from MWSU. So um, as of right now, Pace University does have uh, just better control of the map too. I wouldn't say... Uh, Actually, yeah, no, they have a lot of vision on that bottom side river. Uh, top side river, neither team really has enough vision uh, to know if somebody's going to be on Baron or not. But I do believe uh, with Baron Asher being up, uh, they will try and go for it. So uh, Pace University definitely going to go ahead and try and make uh, coverage for that. Definitely going to go ahead and wait for Zach. Zach's going to go ahead and recall, buy his items. And three bounties are once again on the side of Pace University. Zepho, don't find yourself caught out here. So I mean, they do have Straw Hat Luffy there. So if Zepho managed to find himself caught out there, uh, Thrush probably would have actually went out there. But here we go. They're actually going to go ahead and try and start Baron or at least clear the vision away from it. So... Uh, very interested to see how this goes. There comes the hook. Hook's going to go ahead and miss. Zepho is playing with death here. We're gonna, definitely going to go ahead and walk away here. Just going to go. It seems that uh, there's going to be a little bit of a standstill here waiting. Uh, Pace is waiting for MWSU to go ahead well, and while step this is out of happening, place here. Yep. If I'm uh, correct on the top, obviously the middle numbers, uh, 1122, that's eliminations for both sides that have gotten it. Okay, go and, and then it goes gold, sentries. I want to say the middle one. Gold tower's going to go oh, down. and here Bang comes another fight. Coming in from Zepho, but unfortunately a missed ultimate on Malphite somehow. Here we go. Can they go ahead and survive? Big damage coming in from Dark Ice Flames, but healing on Zach is absolutely incredible. Amon, unfortunately, might not actually make it out alive. Amon's only going to be able to find one kill in the Ash, the Victor, the Camille, and the Zach are going to be fed 13 to 27. Pace University definitely pulling ahead here and going to go ahead and try and end the game. Now, when it comes down to it, I believe MWSU might actually respond just in time. They might actually grab Angelo if they all decide to go ahead and stay. Now, when it comes down to it, they're going to go ahead and grab this inhibitor, and they might actually run. No, they're going to decide to keep pushing. Very interesting play coming in from Pace University. Can they go ahead and end four seconds till Zepho is up? And three seconds for everyone else here. So here we go. Victor wanted to go ahead and keep pushing, but his team said no. So good communication on Pace University. They are going to go ahead and open up that full mid lane and take one tower. So very close game coming in from MWSU Griffins. Now, what MWSU can go ahead and do here is they can go ahead and probably try and turtle somehow. But it does seem that Pace University is going to go ahead and grab Baron. They are going to go ahead and fake Baron, it seems. Or no, it seems that they knew they were going to be in that bush. So what it does seem like now, oh no, here we go. They might actually try and fake Baron, but MWSU might be a little bit smarter than that. Here we go. It seems that Zepho definitely read it, used, her, used his sweep reward and saw it. Here we go. The end gauge coming in from Zepho. A canceled bounce coming in from Zepho. It seems that Pace is actually going to go ahead and almost get caught out here. Big damage going onto Straw Hat Luffy there because of that Victor ulti, and it does seem that they will go ahead and each walk away with nobody going down. So, uh, definitely a good play coming in from MWSU reading and reading pace, but they actually almost went down, which is very scary knowing that MWSU uh, playing with uh, death, as I was uh, saying. So, uh, Cody, any thoughts? Man, you were right. That Zach dude's annoying. He is. Zach is very annoying. Uh, biggest, Especially with all the healing. So have you noticed that he drops these little blobs? I, I, I do. And like even his like afterlife, when he does lose that health, he splits up into a bunch of groups for a chance to come back with, I want to say, maybe half or full health. But either way, yeah, uh, during those battles, I always see him jumping on everyone, doing massive damage. I'm like, dang, right. that's got to be a pain. Even on the side of MWSU, though, what really needs to happen is that they need a really good Malphi ulti. Because what I realized is that last fight, the Malphi Malphi ulti completely missed, and they were all in a group. So what definitely needs to happen here is that they need a big ulti to go ahead and come back into this game from Elfamp. And so without that giant engage ulti, no one else can really go in because what's going to happen here is that without that ulti, that big game-deciding ulti, Pace is just going to go ahead and work around it and be like, okay, none of us got knocked up. Let's just go ahead and attack because they're already down. I agree. And so uh, with that, I believe Pace is actually going to go ahead and take... 
uh, this uh, take Baron here finally after this long wait. No, Zeph is going to be able to go ahead and try and cancel it, but they do take it. Anyways, here we go. I believe MWSU is going to go ahead and try and take it. We got split uh, Camille split pushing down in the bot lane. Amon getting a little bit too aggressive. They're going to be able to go ahead and walk away. Uh, Zach uh, probably going to be able to go ahead and cancel his bounce there or uh, cancel, his, uh, cancel his launch. Uh, and he's going to be able to go ahead and save himself there. So uh, Baron Ash are going to go over to Pace University, and this is what we might see. They got Baron. Now Camille is down in the bot lane. The bot lane's completely open. Elfant probably can't even contest that tower. So what's definitely going to go ahead uh, and happen? Or, yeah, no, Camille went ahead and grabbed that tower. So, excuse me. Sorry, but, yeah, Camille grabbing that tower. Now there's a lot of pressure up in the top and definitely in the bot lane. Now, as much as four people, you know, we have Kerm17, Kasai, E bladder and Zemu one two three, mm -hmm. uh, four of them. As much as they are winning these team fights, we keep forgetting about Angelo. Angelo is barely in these fights, and Angelo is putting pressure along the other side of the map. This is being beautifully executed on the side of Pace University to go ahead and put a lot of pressure around the map where MWSU Griffins will get overwhelmed. Angelo was doing the same thing last game, yes, or at least attempting, but wasn't to able do. to do it because. The uh, now see this is important. Elder Drake here will definitely be the deciding game changer, and I believe. Let's see here with Zepho and Straw Hat Luffy, uh, they definitely are going to be able to. Uh, like, are they or are they going to be able to go ahead and stop this Baron? Here we go. Zepho going to have his ultimate again. Elfam already going to go ahead and go in. I couldn't quite see the ulti if it happened, and it did. Here we go. This might be the game deciding fight right here. Amon managing to go ahead and stay alive, but Amon's going to go ahead and have to walk away here. Camille going to go ahead and hop onto him, and that damage on Camille is scary. They are going to go ahead and grab Elder Drake. This might be the play here to show Ace 7-2 and 10, 8-3-16, 10-2-10, 10-2-10, 7-3-11, 11 all the scores, and 0-3-24. and 24. Pace has definitely overcome MWSU in this game. This will be the end of the game here. So, after all this waiting, of course, we are going to go ahead and, uh, or at Pace University, going to go ahead and take the second game. We're going to go ahead and go on to game three. And I believe we're going to go ahead and take a quick short break real quick. Uh, but before that, what we are going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and play our Kovacs video. Kovacs video, our Kovacs is what a lot of our players use to go ahead and practice their aim, practice all their, you know, skill shots, I assume. I have never used Kovacs myself, but we're going to go ahead and play that ad for you. So we'll be right back, Griffins.
righty, welcome back. Griffin's getting right into Champion Select. If you're just now joining us, I'm Scorch Darren, right next to me. Cody Doc McLaughlin. All righty, Cody. We've had quite the interesting best of three series tonight. Um, so far, MWSU Griffin's had a destructive game, the first or destructive first game, and Pace University had a destructive second game. So anything could go both ways here. MWSU Griffin's going to go ahead and ban the Irelia, Cali, and the Victor after that last game. And then, of course, Pace University going to ban Caitlin, Volleybear, and Nami. So. What, what, okay. I hear Volleybear all the time. Isn't he the, doesn't he have a skin of the giant teddy bear? Does he? No, I don't think. I could have sworn. Oh, that's Annie. Annie? You mean Annie is the bear, Tibbers? Yeah, that's Tibbers. what I was thinking of. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, now, considering how many different legends there are in this, I, I want you to look at this, Cody. Okay, Cody. I know I'm I just looking. interrupted you. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, you can pay back later. You're my you're my partner in crime. Buy All me right. dinner. We'll go get food after this. But, <laughs> anyways, Cody, I want you to go ahead and look at the roster of MWSU Griffins. What do you notice? It's really simple. It's I mean, I, I I I see they took Zach. <laughs> yes, and so I think with that. Do you no, think that's going to be a huge turn? I think it's going to be a huge turn. Because Zin Zhao, now as much as Zin Zhao is nice and, and all that, look. Oh, God, right. So, sorry, I'm, I'm going through a lot okay, of details. Okay, so out of, week, out of curiosity, doesn't it actually come down, even though we have Zach now, mm -hmm. doesn't it also come down, because I, I don't watch a whole lot of practice, but how often Straw Hat Luffy plays him? What's it? Doesn't it come down to how much Straw Hat Luffy has played Zach? It could come down to that too. I don't know how much Straw Hat Luffy has played, but we also don't know how much they've played of Zinzao either. You know what okay, I mean? Okay. Yeah. So he, I mean, Zach is a fairly simple character sometimes. Yeah. But like, it's just matters also who's strong. You know, it matters how everything just comes down. So I'll tell, I'll let you know when we all finish. But on the side of Pace University, they ban Draven and Lucian. They're definitely going to ban out the bot lane, considering that is who they want. But it sees bot lanes already going to go ahead and pick Vayne. And hey, there Lulu. it is, the Vayne and Lulu combo, as I was talking about earlier. Um, very, very important. So Vayne and Lulu, uh, I'm kind of scared, actually, because uh, that's a very devastating uh, combo. Thresh and Zio also very well. Now with the other lanes, Ryze and Zion and Jax, those are very solo queue heavy carrying champions from yeah. my own. So yeah. uh, from my own experience. So um, this one's a little all over the place. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Uh, especially with the York pick. R York's definitely going to be used for split pushing, but it's going to come down to, go uh, to who wins that lane. Because if York wins the lane, he's definitely going to be split pushing. If yeah. Jax wins the lane, York will become... York's going to have to go split push somewhere else. So, uh, anyways, we got 15 seconds. We're going to go ahead and move it on over to our spectate delay. We'll be back in about three minutes. Griffins, don't go anywhere.
All righty, welcome back. I didn't see. I knew you weren't ready. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gents, we got them. <laughs> Anyways, welcome back, Griffiths. We are getting uh, right into our game here as long as um, as long as the spectate delay does not crash. But it doesn't seem like it will, unless I just jinxed it, then I'm going to get fired. Um, anyways, <laughs> let's see, go. <laughs> no, I'm not <laughs> high-fiving to that. <laughs> But anyways, followers, watchers, high five. Oh my gosh. Anyways, uh, as we were talking about earlier, there's definitely some interesting team compositions that we have going on here Yep. Uh, with Pace University and MWSU Griffins. I think I called Pace University's uh, lineup there. Uh, besides Zaya Thresh, I believe what I did is I called it very team or very solo queue oriented, of course. So uh, we are going to go ahead and switch on over to Dark Ice Flames uh, perspective real quick here in a second, but uh, going to go ahead and wait for the. Uh, Okay, I guess not. Um, anyways, going back into it, we're going to go ahead and reset that. But, Cody, what do you think about this next game? What questions do you have? <sighs> Give me the questions. What, what, I have the knowledge. What, what, what's the uh, – okay, so from the common roster right here yes. that we have, what should MWSU, compared to who – the legends that we have, what do you think we should keep an eye out for? Something that could actually change the match at the beginning, the middle, and What the do you end. think MWSU should watch out for? The yeah. Jacks. If Jax teleports in, if Jax is if Jax is split pushing, it's definitely going to be dangerous. But you also have to watch out for the Zin Zhao. You know, something about how the lanes work, right? Say we're in a mid lane, okay? Yeah. If I start moving to the top left, or if I... Okay. Say we're on blue side, okay? Yeah. I, I don't know how to explain that with the... The, the the camera. The side that we were on in the first game, yeah. that's, it, I believe, where we're starting. Placement and positioning is always important, okay? So if you have a point where like i'm moving left and right back and forth on yeah. the lane yep right if i'm moving to the right side of the lane and it forces you to move to like diagonally away from me yeah it's probably because i have a jungler sitting in that bush and i just led you over to a trap it it look stuff like that's important all the little things are important okay yeah so things like that mwc has to watch out for because i know that pace literally was destructive last game. The same thing with MWSU Griffins. Now, this one's also interesting. Zepho going to go ahead and miss the cube, but going to get a couple of auto attacks off on the Zin Zhao. Man, that would make me uncomfortable. That would make me uncomfortable. <laughs> Knowing that I have that little missing health missing. All that little... Yeah. That would... Yeah, that, that'd be a little disturbing. Are you talking <laughs> about Lulu? What? Are you talking about Lulu? Yes. Oh. No, I'm talking about Zin Zhao. Zin Zhao took damage. Oh, okay. Yeah, so... Here we go. Uh, York, again, as I brought up, Elfamp uh, does have the most experience uh, on York, if I am correct. So um, with that, um, I do have a high hopes for that York there to go ahead and get that split pushing off. But uh, as we can see, that's Pajama Guardian Lulu. That's um, so adorable. Yeah. Yeah, I was just about to say that. <laughs> <laughs> say that too. Not, he's not bubblegum anymore. He's water. What, what, what? Yeah, he is water. He's a he's a pool party. You ever been to a pool party? Uh, no. I've, yeah, I've never I had friends. <laughs> All right, back to the game of League of Legends. Zin Zhao is going to go ahead and start on his red buff, and so will Straw Hat Luffy. <laughs> um, oof. <laughs> Dark Ice Flame. <laughs> oh, oh Zephyr is going to go ahead and try and get a couple of auto attacks here. Wolf the Rush, go ahead and try and get that Lulu. No, it does not seem like that. Zai is going to go ahead and take that damage there. Uh, going on from that, uh, of course. Uh, from my comment here of the game. is that Zepho is definitely going to make that Thresh. Uh, he's definitely going to start poking out that Thresh. They want to get that Thresh out of there because then Zaya won't really be able to go ahead and do much. Thresh is already down to half health, uh, but again, people are going to start leveling up. Uh, as you can see, Jack's having that level two advantage above that York. Uh, again, that top lane is either going to be a win or a loss. There will be no in between. Uh, it's it's going to be whoever goes ahead and pulls ahead here. Jack's already up by six CS. So that's very rough. It seems that York already being pushed back uh, behind uh, slowly. Of course, it's only two minutes into the game. So uh, two minutes, 37 seconds to be exact. So here we go. It seems that uh, MWSU Griffins, Amon, and Zephyr are already going to go ahead and push in that lane there. Uh, Zemu, one, two, three. Going to go ahead and try and get in that bush so we can try and find uh, an angle to go ahead and try it uh, and use this hook ability on Amon or Zephyr. But... I don't see it. Now, I'm very... Rise terrifies me, all right? Rise will start one-shotting late game. Like, 
it, it's pretty scary. Here we go. Good damage getting off, uh, or good damage going off of uh, Amon and Zephyr there going off each other. So uh, very well played, putting the Thresh already behind, trying to make sure that he doesn't get his uh, uh, passive ability off uh, on his, what I believe is uh, not Stone Plate? No, not Stone Plate, but... Uh, uh, I totally forgot the name of him. It's, uh, man, having an entire brain freeze right there. Uh, but um, anyways, yeah, no, with that uh, support uh, item that uh, it seems that uh, Zemu decided to go, uh, he can go ahead and execute minions, and it gives gold to both him and his uh, and his ADC. So here we go. It seems that uh, York is going to go ahead and say that the uh, Flash is already gone. Zen's out going to go ahead and try and go in on that York, but not managing to go ahead and find it. Uh, find that connection there so here we go thresh gonna go ahead and miss a hook towards zepho or am on there uh not exactly gonna go ahead and uh as i said not find a connection so they're gonna actually be pushed back very far here but am on getting a little bit too greedy here but we got a tower dive coming in from straw hat luffy but a lot of damage coming in from zemu zemu almost gonna go ahead and go down there anyways uh going on uh from this dark ice flames is gonna go ahead uh, Dark Ice is actually uh, surviving pretty well in a lane here, uh, of course. So uh, maybe we can go ahead and get like a bigger look here uh, on the screen too. I know you can still see us on the <laughs> left side of the screen. <laughs> but I'm on. Uh, I'm on. Uh, <laughs> I'm doing good. Here we I go. Swear. Now looking in uh, at the fact there, uh, this is actually could be a quite a big play here. But if played correctly. <laughs> 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 We just got a my bad. <laughs> a, good, a, a good play could actually come in here. Here we go. Elfam already going to go ahead and take above uh, what seems to be this Jax. Now, as I should explain to you, York can actually be pretty good into Jax, but Jax can also become a hard counter uh, because uh, York uses zombies, right? Okay. What is going on? With, he just took out the square Poro. All right. We saw that. What, what what does that do? Uh, it's a ward. It's a ward skin. It's a lot that goes into it. More of a more of a comp, like a base knowledge of knowing what a poro is and how sad that moment was. Uh, well, I'll explain to you later. Okay. <laughs> you will cry. <laughs> Anyways, Zepho, uh, going back into the bot lane. As I was explaining, actually, wipe that. Uh, with York here, actually. So York has actually managed to go ahead and get above uh, that Jax just a little bit. Down in CS, but definitely suppressing that Jax just a little bit. Because what was happening there is that with Jax's... One of Jax's abilities is that he can dodge all auto attacks for a couple of seconds, right? And whoever, you know, he'll do like this little twist thing. And then he'll stun who's ever in the small little circle. But we do have a strong gank coming in here from Straw Hat Lovey, but a counter gank coming in from Zinzao. Zinzao might actually go ahead and grab first blood here. Dark Ice Flames going to be able to go ahead and walk away, but Straw Hat Luffy unfortunately going to go ahead. Uh, actually, everyone's just going to go ahead and walk away there. Everyone's going to go ahead and survive. Uh, Jackson being able to see that he went and go ahead and uh, went ahead and recalled and teleported uh, back to lane here. Oh, miss hook coming in from Zemu one two three. Unfortunately, a miss kill on that Amon there. So Amon's going to be able to go ahead and get under tower and be safe. So here we go. Might see a little bit. Oh, Zepho unfortunately going to be able to go ahead and take that on a miss minion on Amon's side. Going to have to have a talk with him about that one. And he's going to grab two out of four as what I saw, <laughs> giving him just a little bit of trouble there. But anyways, Dragon is up in about uh, 10 seconds, too. We are going to go ahead and see the enemy red buff back up here, too. So red buffs are coming back on at the same time. Barely any damage coming in from Elfam. Not having any zombies go ahead and target uh, or bring back any little uh, minions from the dead. So York can summon minions. Here we go. This is what I was talking about, that spin move. Uh, of course, Angel's going to go ahead and jump on top of Elfam, but Elfam... Uh, gonna take a little bit of spin damage move as there, in to like get out of a hard spot if they're stunned or just like hit. He can he can jump. Another one of his uh, abilities that he can jump to minions or teammates. So he can, it's easy for him to go ahead. He can also jump on wards. Okay, that's another thing. So uh, here we go. Oh. There's those zombies that you were uh, that I was bringing up earlier. And if he's okay. targeted or marked, he will go ahead and survive. Ooh, rise might actually take out dark ice flames there. Dark ice flames one shot away. From being taken out, but it seems that Rise is not going to be able to go ahead and finish off that kill. Here we go. Already seeing it. Angelo going to be able to go ahead. Um, Angelo is going to go ahead and push in or even out the waves here. So uh, we're actually standing pretty even here. Besides uh, 700 gold difference, uh, Pace is already going to go ahead and be ahead. Uh, it seems that Amon's going to go ahead and roll away and dodge the Thresh Q. Uh, so, uh, yeah, definitely everyone's going to be at a little bit of a standstill here. How was that drink? It was good. 
<laughs> Thank you for acknowledging that I'm taking a drink. You're drink. welcome. Here we go. Yeah, see, it seems like Kasai is actually going to be able to manage to go ahead. Um, oh, it seems that like we're actually going to get a gank here, and Let's Kasai go. will go down. First blood going to go over to go over to the Zach. Good ultimate coming in from okay. Dark Ice Flames too. So from Elv uh, Elvam's uh, zombies, as you called it. Yes. How fast can she spawn them in? Uh, okay, so with her Q, she can execute a minion, and a grave is spawned. Uh, when three graves are on the map and they're all in a little bit of a certain range from each other, yeah. she can press Q again and summon them. It's a very interesting um, very interesting uh, mechanic in the game. So, okay. uh, so you can have up to four at a time, I believe. So, oh, Zepho in a little bit of trouble here. Oh, Zepho's going to be able to go ahead and ult himself. They're going to be able to go ahead and flash away. Here we go. But can they go ahead and get out? He's going to go ahead and shield himself. Ammon, no, what are you doing? Oh, he's, is he going to get the kill? Though? He's going to get the last auto attack off, but he's going to go ahead and trade. But he actually played that really well, actually. Managing to go ahead and do half damage to Zaya and take out the Thresh there. And York is managing to go ahead and be dominant up in the top lane. Honestly, Seems pretty worth it to me. And we have Straw Hat Luffy going to go ahead. Here we go. Going to go ahead and knock them together. Can this be the kill? Here we go. Zach going to be able to go ahead and slay Zaya there. Dark Ice Flames managing to go ahead and try and get away there. And Rise accidentally takes his teleport. I cannot quite find uh, the camera. There we go. Dark Ice Flames going to have to run away. Can York going to go ahead and make it? Dark Ice Flames, no. Going to get a flash EQ'd, unfortunately. Uh, Dark Eyes is going to go ahead and go down there. York, unfortunately, not being able to be able to, uh, to rotate um, rotate and make it there. So that's all right. Just seemed to be uh, not late at all, but just with the way the timing worked and how fast Rise uh, just came to be, Elfam wasn't able to make it in their time. So very well played on the Rise on Pace University, of course. Only two to three. Will this be Angelo? Oh, Angelo's not going to go ahead and go down. Jack's going to be able to go ahead and stay alive here. But Jax is above by about 25 CS. So I uh, definitely want to go ahead and watch for that. Uh, going on uh, down the line here, Zach being 2-0 and o right now with 150 gold bounty. Here we go. If Elf Vamp, got to be careful there because if Elf Vamp keeps wasting all this mana, Jax will be able to actually outplay uh, the York. But York's Q does cost about, I think, 25, 30 mana. So uh, top lane, uh, again, have, I have uh, high, high hopes for... Man, I need a drink break. Cody, take it away. Cool, cool, cool. With the knowledge that I know and what I've seen so far, MWS, th this is the game at the moment is back on equal ground. Yeah, it seems like, and considering how uh, it is, look uh, at the gold. It's no, only about yeah. two hundred gold difference. <laughs> but it seems right now that we're at a, a we're, go we're gold seeing gold right now where Western. the game could go any way. Yep. With the first game. Obviously, we were pushing very hard. The second game, they were pushing very hard, and we could see what was possibly going to happen. This one, I'm still stunned. I don't know what's going to happen. I, I, I still think with uh, the characters that I've seen so far, uh, experience-wise, I've definitely seen Zack now play. I've seen Lulu play. These other characters, I haven't seen any of them. But with how the advantage goes, my opinion, I still think MWSU might take it because of the abilities we have compared to the ones you've. I've Ooh, seen their easy stun me. over there by Dark. Oh, Dark Ice Flames! You gotta watch out for the ultimate. It doesn't execute when they're on sixty percent health. Definitely gotta watch out for that. Definitely may, might have seemed like she could have killed him. Might have seemed like uh, Dark Ice Flames got a little bit used to all the damage she did last game, or or uh, the first game. My apologies. And uh, maybe it's now <laughs> trying to carry over here. It's a whole new game. Definitely got to watch out on how you use that ultimate on Vyar because mm -hmm. it's an execute ultimate. Again, I think it's 33.3% health yeah. or something that like that. And also, I noticed it's that we do have one dragon. Uh, we do. We did just get one dragon. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, MWSU is actually down uh, by about 300 gold, uh, 400 gold. So uh, definitely got to be uh, careful of that. Definitely don't want that gold to go ahead and have um, a bigger gap than that. Can, so. can you remind me again? The uh, types of dragons we have here. I know that we had, there are different wow. ones. You mentioned Elder Dragon. You mentioned... So Elder Drake is the last Drake after four dragons have been... Uh, or after Soul has been captured. And okay. that mean, and the Elder Drake is what will actually take the game, like whoever, like... At least make Usually, a giant advantage. You, so what happens there is when you capture the Elder Drake, okay? Wow, oh my gosh, a lot of damage coming in here from Elf Vamp. It does seem that uh, Kerm is going to have to go ahead and use his ulti here. Oh, my gosh. Is this what we've been looking for? Elfam going to be able Let's to go ahead go. and here change comes the targeting Luffy. over. Elfam going to be able to go grab a kill on the Jax. Jax is going to go down, getting a little bit too greedy there. They didn't expect that the Zack to go ahead and be there. The Zack pick is so strong right now. And I've dropped my pen. And <laughs> moving on. From, thank you. 
uh, moving on from that, it seems that uh, now the gold has changed. So now they're back to being even and go. This pen's uncomfortable. And so, oh, thank you. Where, the, where do you keep getting all these pens from? Don't ask me. <laughs> anyway. Anyways, Xin Zhao is going to go ahead and try and do something there. But here we go. Uh, we might actually see uh, Scuttle Crab uh, get taken out here too. So definitely a lot of uh, top priority happening there. A lot of top, uh, top control of the map there. Uh, for MWSU Griffins. Now, um, of course, uh, Ammon and Zepho definitely playing it safer this game, not pushing in as much. Here we go. Can Dark Ice Flames manage to go ahead and find the kill here? Dark Ice Flames does have the ultimate, manages to go ahead and use the ult again, and a kill going over to Dark Let's Ice go. Flames. There we go. Bounties on Zach too. Zach not being, or uh, Zach not going to go ahead and go down. Zach being a destructive jungler. So, and anyway. if I'm correct now, we have jumped yep. ahead in gold. And eliminations, uh, at least by some little distance. Dark might actually get caught here without that jungler. What can they do? Elf Vamp, unfortunately, going to go ahead and go down, becoming one and one a kill. Going to go over to Zinzao. Zinzao is now two and zero, oh, just like the Zach. Definitely going to watch out there for. Uh, definitely got to watch out there. But what I do know is that Zach will definitely be more of an impact in that late game, uh, if I uh, do say so. Uh, if I am. Uh, perhaps uh, wrong about that, then I obviously need to start playing League again. Um, but. Oh, Dark Ice Flames is going to get flash queued on. Can Dark Ice Flames survive? Jax might actually go ahead and go down here. He is stuck. Dark Ice Flames is going to be able to go ahead and kill Jax. A tower dive coming in from Ammon. Ammon is going to go ahead and trade. Here we go. Oh, unfortunately, this fight might not go well. Zepho is going to go ahead and go down. Ooh, it seems that maybe down in the bot lane that wasn't necessarily the best fight, but that is all right. Uh, definitely a 2-2 two two, uh, vein is definitely more scarier than a 1-2 Zaya. Uh, with two assists. So um, definitely uh, pulling ahead there uh, with about 1K gold is the MWSU Griffins. So uh, I'm definitely excited to go ahead and see where this game goes. Another uh, goes another Luffy game coming, coming in, in from Kasai. Here we go. He's going to go ahead and miss his Everfrost there. Elf Vamp right on top of that rise. His rise is going to go ahead and flash away. Another kill going over to Straw Hat Luffy. Here we go. It seems that Kerm17 is going to have to be able to go ahead and walk away because he can't really do much there in a 2v1 situation with the 3 and Ozak and uh, a destructive York. So here we go. It seems that uh, Elf Vamp is going to be able to go ahead and walk back up top lane. transition from the top lane to the uh, mid lane? You mean uh, rotate on down? Yeah. Yeah, I do believe okay. so because we definitely don't want to leave that uh, mid lane open. and wanted to go ahead and stop that rise, and that's what happened. And it was completely worth it because they managed to go ahead and stop that kill for it. It seems that mid lane tower is going to go ahead and go down too. It seems that MWSU Griffins are having uh, a fair game here. So here we go. Uh, sorry. went on. I was very confused. My cam The camera started freaking out. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, Kerm17 going to go ahead and take out his red buff here. Oh, Ammon getting a little bit, a little bit. Oh, hooked, almost hooked by the Thresh. Here we go. This might be a good gank coming in here from Kerm17, but it might be even more of a counter gank coming in from the Zach here. As you can see, Zach's going to just go ahead and start rotating down. Here we go. But so is Rise. It seems like this is going to go ahead and be a dragon play here. There we go, Elf Vamp. Going to be able to go ahead and miss her E, not be able to do much. So it seems that Zach or um, Jax did go ahead and win that trade there. Here we go. It seems that we're going to have a little bit of a 3v3 down in the bot lane, perhaps. So uh, very curious to know how this is going to get played out here. But they might not even know that Zach's here anymore. But here we go, Kerm17. Here we go. Big engage coming in from Straw Hat Luffy, but not enough. Here we go. Is Straw Hat Luffy going to ult? Straw Hat Luffy's going to go ahead and ult. Zepho going to be able to go ahead and go down here. But they're not targeting the right person. Two kills. Uh, going to go over be split between Ammon and Zach there. I'm yeah, making a mess over here. <laughs> in what way? I... I, I N never mind. Don't take later. <laughs> but it looks like at the moment we are. Do we still do have an advantage or somewhat of an advantage over them? Well, right now we have a three k gold lead with a tower above them. So yes, we are ahead right now, even by one drink. So objective wise, yes. Okay. And earlier you mentioned uh, between Zach and another character on. I can't remember who what the person's name was. You said that uh, Zach will be able. Most likely. And uh, when it comes down to it, what, out of Zach and that one, uh, who do you think would... Do you mean uh, the, the enemy jungler or the enemy top lane? Or is it someone uh, on our team? Uh, I believe you. it was the jungler that you mentioned. Because uh, you mentioned someone that could one-shot them towards the end of the game. Who would be... Rise. Yeah. Who would be more of an advantage to have then at the end game? Of uh, honestly, if Rise starts scaling like this... I mean, Rise is 1-3, so he's already been put behind. And... 
as we can see, there's already three bounties on MWSU Griffin. So honestly, as of right now, I really can't say right. I mean, they're just a little bit behind here. So definitely pulling ahead is MWSU Griffins. I don't really think they should have much to worry about anytime soon unless they lose a team fight okay. or lose any of these small trades. So um, going on from that, of course, um, yeah, so usually from out here, Pace definitely doesn't want to go ahead and fight here. As we can see, uh, Dark I or um, Elfam going to be able to go ahead uh, and notice this. And now walking up here, and uh, Elfam's going to be able to go ahead and walk away. As you can see, they're uh, sort of playing safe here. Oh, good hook coming in from uh, Thresh, but for what? Dark Ice Sam's going to go ahead and execute the Zaya. We're going to have Zepho going to go ahead and ult Dark Ice Flames here. Dark Ice Flames going to gain a little bit more health, a little bit more. Uh, a little bit more uh, uh, safety uh, there, of course. Uh, Dark Ice Flames, uh, of course, Lulu Ulti makes the person bigger. The person gains attack speed. They also gain uh, a lot more uh, Who's uh, the big dude that's following Elvamp right now? Like, what's with the... I know you said that you could control uh, downed... Uh, oh, that's uh, the ultimate of York. So, okay. uh, York uh, summons... Uh, oh, what a beautiful play coming from Dark Ice Flames. Can they go ahead and grab the kill, though? And it seems that we have a 5-0 and o Zach, a 3-1 and one Vigar, and a 3-2 and two, uh, ADC on the side of MWSU. Those are the small trades setting pace a little bit far more or a little bit uh, more far behind. So here we go. Hextech Drake going to be able to be taken by MWSU Griffins, I believe. So... Here we go. So that's York's ultimate. York uh, summons a giant ghost from the grave, and the ghost uh, does a, a little move uh, called sucking the essence. That's what I call it. Okay. And so uh, from there on out, what it really happens is that it, it kind of does like this one thing where it like sucks the life force out of them, kind of. Yeah. It's like I, I, don't, I don't really know how to explain it. You know what I mean? Kind of so, like an energy drain. I, I, yes, like I energy drain. Yes. Yeah, I, I can kind of see it, that. It just yeah. does damage. It does a little damage over time. Yeah, oh, it, what a beautiful hook coming in from the Thresh. Can this be a one-team fight, though? As you can see, Dark Isom's getting a little bit low there, almost pushing up too far, but it seems that like everyone's going to go ahead. LVM's got a and crowd there, with so. uh, taking it to that century. Yeah, oh, what a good uh, try coming in from Straw Hat Luffy trying to go ahead and knock up uh, that rise there. Here we go. If played right, MWSU can actually go ahead and win this fight down below. Now... They will lose if Ammon somehow manages to go ahead and try and dive under tower. You'd never want the ADC to dive under tower for kills. But I'm not the player Ammon is, so whatever they're doing, they can go ahead and keep doing it. I will go ahead and trust them. Technique. <laughs> uh, technique. 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 <laughs> Anyways, Elfam going to be able to go ahead and grab this tower up in the top lane before Jax can get there probably, yeah. Elvamp in the posse. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they're zombie or zombie. Zombie posse and the minions. Yeah, so here we go. Let's Angelo, go, let's go. Not going to be able to really do much here. He's going to have to be able to go ahead and take out those minions here. Oh, Elfamp might actually go ahead and get caught out here. Can they go ahead and survive? Oh, Elfamp's actually going to be taken out here. Oh, the beautiful flash. Uh -oh. There's three on top of Elfamp. Elfamp not going to be able to go ahead. Oh, Elfamp might actually be able to go ahead and survive here. Zephyr going to be able to go ahead and all oh, Elfamp. But here we go. Amon going to be able to go ahead and try and Tr uh, try and get some kills here. Good rotations coming in from MWSU. Good stun coming in from Dark Ice Flames. Here we go. A kill. Going to go over, over to Dark Ice Flames. Ammon going to be able to grab one. Can he grab uh, two? Oh my gosh. Let's a go. double kill. Going to be able to go over to Zach Ryan. Going to be able to manage to take out Dark Ice Flames. Here we go. Can they go ahead and rush over? He's going to get it. His ult canceled. This will be a kill over to Ammon. Ammon and Zach and definitely winning that fight with help from Dark Ice Flames. That stun on Vigar, the giant cage that they can get stunned in, is very vital in those fights. As much as Elfant went down, they went and they followed way too long, and they ended up suffering from it. That's an ace going to go over to the side. So full team wipe of on MWSU. that one. Huh? Full team wipe? Full team wipe. Let's go. And I guess we're going to go ahead and take another century. That places us at four centuries compared to their one and two dragons also taken. Uh, now, I can't remember also, what does that mean right between the four and two, the zero? What's that? Because I remember seeing a one there earlier. Four, two, the what? The zero right there on the uh, middle right there. Oh, between so the that must two. be uh, Baron's taken. So okay. uh, I do believe that actually shows the bounties and what is on them. So as you can see, uh, I believe, okay, so... This is, I, I know exactly what this is. So have you noticed that there are uh, gold, uh, gold prices under each and every single one of the, the towers and there's the barons and then there's the dragons? Yeah. So actually, 
since Pace University is behind mm -hmm. by uh, the amount of gold right now, yeah. I think it's about seven, I think. Maybe just about. I can't okay. do... Oh, uh, five, actually. They're down by 5,000. Okay. So there are gold bounties actually on objectives. So dragons, there's one on Baron, and then there's one on... Uh, there's some on towers now, too. So uh, it's on to help to where games aren't so one-sided, and there's a chance for a team to go ahead and bring themselves back in. So it gives Pace the opportunity if they're able to. So really what this is about is MWSU needs to go ahead and keep their advantage, or else Pace University will go ahead and bring themselves back into the game. You know, they're not out, but they're definitely behind right now. Oh, Straw Hat Luffy is going to go ahead and miss uh, his knock up there. He's going to go ahead and walk away. A uh, good little amount of damage done on him, too, but uh, no, he's probably just going to go ahead and heal it all back up. Here we go. Elf Fant managed to go ahead and keep this Rise under control. Rise definitely going to be uh, stuck there for a little bit, not going to be able to go ahead and push in that wave there, but it does seem that York will go ahead and walk away. I'm very curious to know if actually... Uh, it's, I believe it's going to be Mountain Drake here for the soul again. So whoever's going to get that Mountain Drake soul will actually uh, get that overshield, as I was saying. So, oh, it seems that Rise is actually stuck, but Rise will go ahead and ult out and teleport away. So uh, his is pretty much a cast and an ulti, but much more harder to go ahead and activate. Uh, his is just a giant teleport portal that he can send out yeah. and teleport okay. away. So. Uh, that's Rise's ultimate. Of course, it's really good for team fights, but usually what happens is... Uh, through bad experiences, if placed incorrectly, uh, Rises will TP your entire team into death. So uh, that's just from me and what I've seen. It usually never goes well. So here we go. It seems that uh, Dark Ice Flame is actually up top there playing against the Jacks. That's very interesting. So here we go. Straw Hat Luffy. This might actually be a good fight for Dragon for Pace to take. But Ammon's going to go ahead and ult there. Oh, it seems that they're actually going to be taken away. Oh, my gosh. The damage coming in from Ammon there. Ammon going to be able to go ahead and get hooked. He's going to go ahead and cleanse himself away, getting unhooked, getting him out of that tough situation there. This might be a Dragon. The third Drake going to go over to MWSU Griffins. There it is. Ammon going to be able to I saw one of them about dragon. to take that turn to go and try to steal the dragon, but they decided to change their mind as soon as we got it. Yeah. Uh, repeat that again? Well, I, I don't remember who the character was, but yep. I saw them. They were about to turn that corner. They actually did turn the corner, and they saw, I believe it was Zach, go ahead and uh, take the dragon, mm -hmm. and they decided to bail out on that one. Uh, it was probably the Zaya, I want to say. We just, we just saw it. Right, but it was Zinzel. But, I mean, like the, again, that Zach is 7-0. and oh. That's a really tanky boy right there. Uh, especially with the items uh, that the Zach has. So, um, yeah, so they definitely weren't going to go ahead and grab that object, uh, ob object div. Ah, cannot speak. Uh, I was thinking of Jax, and I mixed it up with objective. Uh, anyways, Jax going to be able to go ahead and grab that Thresh Lantern there. Uh, this is very tough for Pace University right now. They need to be able to go ahead uh, and try and take care of that York there. York's actually going to be able... Oh, a good stun coming in from Dark Ice Flames. Here we go. Zepho and Ammon, actually. It seems that MWC split up here. They are going to go ahead and regroup together in the enemy jungle. They need to go ahead and get to a lane, though, because as we saw last game, actually, it's very dangerous to fight in the enemy's jungle unless you're ahead and somebody gets caught out. Usually, that doesn't happen. That's not the case. So... MWSU Griffin is going to be able to go ahead and walk away. Going to go ahead and regroup on the top lane, regrouping with the minion wave, actually, to go ahead and try and push. So what they're doing here is that they're uh, splitting up the pressure between the lanes. So as you can see, York's in the bot lane uh, with the ultimate, and everyone else is, uh, or, yeah, bot York's in the bot lane. Uh, probably going to go ahead and try and wait for that rise, try and get a kill on rise. Ooh, what a good hook coming in from Thresh. Here we go. Is this a tower dive I see? Here we go. It seems that Ammon's actually going to go ahead and get stuck here. Oh, what a push. Oh, double kill going to go ahead and go over to Ammon. But Zepho's going to get left behind, and tower aggro's going to go ahead and change. You guys need to go ahead and get out of there. Here we go. That's what they might go ahead and do. Here we go. It seems that they can't actually compete here. Oh, what a good bait coming in from Elfamp there. Here we go. This might be a kill onto Ammon. Ammon's going to be able to go ahead and try and get out of there. Ammon's taking a lot of damage. Well, Ammon's going to go, bid, uh, go ahead and be able to get... Uh, uh, going to go ahead and escape there. So uh, very well played uh, when it comes to those tower dives from Straw Hat, Luffy, and Ammon. A good uh, late game jungle bot lane duo. We love to see it. So anyways, Cody's question. You have any questions? At the moment, no. Okay. I'm pretty caught up on at least what's going on at the moment. 
and how well we're doing. I know we at least have a really good lead ahead of them, especially century wise. Uh huh. And uh, about seven k in gold, and three dragons at the moment. So I think we're doing pretty solid. At, le uh, at least advantage wise, and we are getting close. To at least we're already past the halfway point of the game to possibly yeah, winning. Yeah, Baron's going to go over to the MWSU Griffins. It was just left open there. Here we go. Can Elfam go ahead and survive those? They take out Elfam. That's definitely going to be. Um, it's definitely going to be a tough loss considering the fact that Elfam is the split pusher. Can Elfam keep surviving? No. Going to get stunned and rise. Going to go ahead and TP on top. So Elfam, that's very worth on the side of Pace University considering I believe Elfam actually had a bounty if I'm uh, if I'm incorrect. Uh, somebody can go ahead and correct me. But um, I would, but I, uh, I'm not sure either. <laughs> Anyways. MWSU Griffin is going to go ahead and lose Elfamp there. It was very vital, too, considering Elfamp is very... Uh, the character York is very good at split pushing, as I've mentioned before. And you definitely need that, but it's okay. We also do have people like Amon, Dark Ice Flames, and Zach who are very ahead, too. And it's very hard for... Uh, Isaiah, who's 1-5, to go ahead and get back into the game, too. Uh, I don't know if Zaya's exactly in the meta anymore, but I definitely uh, do know Zaya was strong at one point. So uh, go, uh, going on here, uh, as we can see right now, there is a, there might be a little bit of a team fight coming in here. Uh, veins are very scary, by the way, once fed. And considering that already the Vein already has a Goonsie's Rage Blade, Phantom Dancer, and now we're already seeing a Wits End along with... Uh, what I do believe is, uh, what's the name of it? Uh, crossbow. Uh, I completely forgot it. <laughs> I forgot the name of it, of course, because I never used it. I didn't realize how strong it was until uh, now. I usually went with, uh, I believe it's, uh, oh, a moral shield bow. That's right. Uh, I was confusing it with gale force. I almost said gale force, and that would definitely would not have been good. <laughs> um, anyways, uh, it seems that, uh, uh, Jax is actually going to be pushed under his own tower. That's a little bit different, but it seems that we already have a team fight coming in here from uh, uh, side of MWSU. Uh, let's see here. Ammon's going to be able to go ahead and grab one straw. Kill's going to go over uh, to Straw Hat Luffy here. Can they go ahead? Oh! A one-shot ulti coming in from Dark Ice Flames. Ammon and Mortal Shield Bow is going to go ahead and save Ammon here. Let's see. How many more kills can Ammon get? Ammon's going to go ahead and grab... Our uh, Dark Ice is going to go ahead and grab a double kill there, too. So an ace over the side of MWSU Griffins. And this might actually be the end of the game. Will MWSU go ahead and win this series tonight? I believe so. This will be the end of game two or game three. And MWSU will go ahead and win the series for tonight. We'll go ahead and move on that, co uh, that uh, camera over to us. Cody. What an amazing series. MWSU grabbing the Zach pick and uh, going to go ahead and, like, they grabbed the Lulu in the vein. Very disgu disgusting. V very powerful. Very powerful duo in the bot lane, as I said. Once they get started and they start snowballing, you really can't stop them. Anyways, a couple wor uh, a word before we go ahead and end the stream here. We do have our very own YouTube channel now. I believe it's Griffin Esports. Uh, definitely would appreciate if any of our viewers would go ahead and go subscribe to it. Should the be link in the chat. is wait, in no, the wait, chat. Wait, How way. dare you interrupt me? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> Do you say Darren or Cody? I believe you're the only one able to talk. Oh, now. I'm the only able to talk now. Go ahead. Cool. End it. <laughs> Darren's mic is muted. Let's go. Anyway, guys, like he said, make sure to at least subscribe, leave a like, check out our YouTube channel. It will have a lot of good stuff there, and we will definitely be posting there as much as we can, which will be very deeply into esports. Other than that, guys, have a great night. Thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you later.